Are we ready? Ready. Yes. yes. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so it is all over me. <laughs> okay. I see. All right. I recognize yeah, some names. Exciting. I do too. Hey, everyone. Jenny. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Another Hi. poem. Hi, Sigrid. Hello. Oh. Hello. Look Remember at you. that you are all oh, muted. Oh, so it's yeah. nighttime there. Yeah. You're all muted. So if you want to talk in a minute, you know, yeah, not all together. I can't hear you, Sigrid and Brigitte, but hello. Yeah. Nice. Well, welcome to the, the custom party. Yeah. Hi. Can you hear us now? I can um, now, yeah. Welcome. Okay. Nice. Wow. <laughs> so nice. Yeah. It's I know, incredible. I love it. Look, Julie. You know the sweater? Can you yes, see? Yes, of course. Beautiful. This is Paula's favorite one. <laughs> oh yeah, I see it. I'm trying to look. Yeah, at yeah. Different locations. Paula, it's it's from you. The, the yarn yeah. is from my yes. yak. Yes, yes, Sigrid. It's beautiful. I have my hair. It was too hot to wear it. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, as a reminder to everybody, the chat is recorded. Uh, today is really about trying to talk about an interlong. Um, why we are doing it, what we are doing, and ask you questions as well. And uh, so if you don't want to appear, if you don't want to be recorded, uh, right now the recording only goes for the uh, Mayak, Julie Hoover, and uh, Denit Imposse. And uh, I thought that maybe we should start with an introduction because not everybody knows who I am. I'm sure that everybody's here for Julie, so everybody will know who no. Julie is. <laughs> <laughs> but... Um, but we should, uh, um, well, we should start maybe with a small introduction. What do you think, ladies? Sure. Yeah, great yeah. idea. Yeah. Yeah. That's fine. Okay, I go. <laughs> <laughs> I go. Oh, oh, I go. Uh, so I'm, uh, um, I'm Paula, uh, the uh, co-owner of Mayak Fibers. And uh, I know that a lot of you have been knitting with, uh, uh, with Mayak. And uh, uh, I'm good friends with both Julie, Laura, Kate, and Kim. And we will tell you how we came about uh, uh, the Nita Long, but just so that I introduce myself, I'm the co-host of this custom party and I'm really excited to have all of you here. Um, so, you, oh, what's yeah. happening? I'm sorry. Oh, that's bizarre. Julie, you go. Yes. Okay. Okay, now. Um, you, I noticed you have to turn on your camera and your volume. Oh, okay. So we asked you so all to- Try this can, sign. Is, can you yourself? click on join a meeting? It doesn't look like it's, okay. I guess the sign but it, in. But it popped in. Well, when you click in. sign in, it worked. No, oh, I didn't. Can you, I clicked you, join. Oh, you did? Okay, so let's do that. Okay. Enter your email. Oh, okay. I don't, no. No? No. Okay. I apologize. My dog is stressed out for, that he's not included. Yeah. Okay. So oh, here we are. Who's we were making... trying to mute, uh, you know, when you come in and remember, uh, we tried to, um, you know, we did mute <laughs> yourself, but I mute myself too. <laughs> not because we don't want to hear from you, but because it's too many people talking, we will not be able to hear each other. But there will be time for you. And we have a chat going on, and then we go back to okay, introduction. Uh, so please oh, do, um, so you you know, do find video. anything in the chat That's as well. I did. Oh, you did. Been, I know. Bizarre. Oh, there oh, we go. There he is. Okay, now she's there. Amazing. We go. Okay. <laughs> All right, Julie. <laughs> you want to introduce uh, yourself? You introduce myself. I'm Julie Hoover. Um, I would hope you. I would hope you're somewhat familiar with me. This is what I look like. <laughs> I don't show my face very often, so. Um, Welcome. Yeah, we're excited to have everybody joining in and uh, I hope we're going to have some fun. So thank you to Paula for the idea and thank you to Laura, Kate and Kim for graciously joining in as well. So yeah. Yes, thank you. And I'm going to start scrolling through to see who's here. But I'm, <laughs> I'm seeing a lot of names that I recognize and it's yeah. so nice to see your faces as well. So Okay. And uh, we're yeah. the Knitting Posse. Yes. I'm Kim. I'm Kate. I'm Laura. <laughs> <laughs> You've had a lot of practice with that. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> Big fans. Yeah. Yeah. 
of ourselves. Of ourselves? Yeah. No. Big <laughs> hands of your podcast. Your podcast. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's, so, it, yeah. that's it. That's all so you you're say. You're in charge, Paula. Oh, I mean, you know what to do. Paula? I mean, well, okay, I'm you just said uh, I'm the neat imposter, but you like, you are the neat imposter. I mean, you have the most amazing, uh, first you have the most amazing YouTube channel that you talk about knitting all the time because that's all you do, right? Yes, that's <laughs> pretty <right>. much. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so the uh, Laura, Kate and Kim are three friends. They came together uh because for the love of knitting like many uh many of us and i remember you know watching the channel and just thinking like oh, wow this is really nice because this was nothing i think it was fun you know watching you right. is like when you're at home whether, whether i'm knitting or cooking or anything you know uh it's nice to hear your voices because you're so natural and you just tell stories about what you do and you laugh and you truly look like you're enjoying yourself every single episode and i'm like i want to be there so i thought <laughs> why not to i need to along together so i can be part yeah, of it yeah thank you we, yeah we do we have fun together and i think that's the biggest compliment if someone says to us like oh i feel like i'm in the living room with you knitting so that's what we aim for yeah you had you started your podcast before we met at Paula's event way back or would what what was it that did, made you decide to start a podcast? You want to answer? Kim. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, Kim and I had been watching knitting podcasts for a while, and we started with um, the Grocery, Grocery Girls, Girls and um, mm -hmm. as Boss Tree Co. And we met them um, both mm -hmm. at Rhinebeck. Was it twenty seven seventeen? Must I think? Yeah. Um, and Lisa from Espostri Co was like, just do it. You know, we told her we were thinking about it and we were like, we don't have a camera. We don't have this. We don't have that. She's like, you don't need it. Just do it. And so you don't need um, a camera for a podcast. Well, I mean, you don't need a special a camera. Oh, around. right. Right. Okay. You know? So, uh, so we just, we just decided to do it and we just kind of sit around. It, it's, it, we used to knit together and this is kind of what we sounded like while we were knitting together. Now we just record it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So is your, I noticed, I watched a couple episodes and I noticed that you start out with what you're wearing and then you kind of transition into what you're working on or something you just finished. And then you go into what you want to work on next or some little tips. Is that sort of a formula that all the podcasters use or is that, did you come up with that on your own? Oh God, yeah, no, we no. copied. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Is I'm that is that up. common? Because I was yeah. thinking, wow, yeah, that's that's, that's interesting. What the format I, is. I, I had never watched it anymore. <laughs> really? I I have a confession. Yeah. I watch like murder things and dark, oh, you're dark humor. You're I don't watch yeah. I can't I get enough knitting. Nice. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Well, yeah. we talk about you a lot. But <laughs> good thing. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, I hope it's not. <laughs> But that's how, you know, that's how I decided to pull this thing together because from the almost the beginning when I started following you, and it's funny that you mentioned uh, um, Lisa and Melissa ex uh, Espastrico because they had the podcast and, uh, you know, we are friends. And and I kept saying, I don't know how you're doing it. You know, I sh in, and people were asking me to do it. And I said, no, no, I cannot do it. I cannot do it. And they said the same to me, go for it. And then I saw the people going and... Um, and I thought I'm not that's not me but then you know we started I, I think I start I'm not really regular I you know I start and go I do a little bit I know you know with uh, um with the Mayak Tibetan fiber channel on YouTube and I see that when we post something people watch it which, but I should be more regular but what I found that was really difficult just to do it by myself because I'm alone you know Andrea yeah, is in right. bed is traveling he doesn't want to appear <laughs> and talking to myself alone sometimes I think like oh, do they look like a fool you know, like, <laughs> you know, I, I, I love, you know like I laugh by myself maybe the more yeah. it feels more natural yeah. I, I couldn't do it if it was just me I really couldn't I oh, wouldn't do it yeah. um, and um, I, I, I agree the biggest compliment is when people say I just feel like I'm hanging out with my friends because we just laugh and have a good time and we're you know I think it's well, just when you're together, you're more yourselves too, because you're not, you're, you're comfortable. It's not like right. so we can well call each other out. Yeah. Our... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
but, uh, but it would you know, be very awkward. I think it would be very awkward to do it just one person. And there's lots of people who do it and they do it well. I don't think I could do it. I think is, uh, you know, I'm trying. Well, you are the swatching one. So I have a lot of confidence. <laughs> So you did watch a couple, but <laughs> also like, you know, for I the know, people, for the people know. that know Julie, I'm sure that she doesn't really appear much, you know, she's behind the scene, she's behind the photos. And, uh, um, as I was saying, I, when I was watching, uh, um, uh, the posse is I could see that they love knitting your designs. And uh, so that's why they came to mind when we thought about it along. And I remember, uh, when I asked you first, you said, are you mad? <laughs> <laughs> Meet Julie Hoover. <laughs> yeah, Julie that's Hoover. My, that's my and, are you mad? You want me to do always. what? Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> and uh, you didn't want to do the video stuff. She said, oh yeah, people can knit stuff, can knit my designs. Do I need to be there? <laughs> I'm like, no. <laughs> But here she is. Well, I, I came, I, I finally came along to the idea. Just, it just takes some coaxing and yeah, pretend you're the just medication. <laughs> no, yeah, just it's just exactly you know Kim said. Just I'm pretend because you are with friends. So it's yeah. it's always a hard thing for me to to put the spotlight on myself. I I'm not comfortable that way. So. Oh, we are so good at that instead. <laughs> yes, yes, you guys are very good at that. <laughs> so we have tons of people. We have eighty-five people uh, oh, uh, right amazing. now in uh, uh, in uh, in the in the chat. So one of the things that we would like to ask you, because you can't be like you know talk all the time, could you just let us know where you're coming from in the chat? If you if you if you want to, if you can just start writing, you know where you're coming from, and uh, so you know, and then any question that you have please, or any comments, and then we will ask you what you're deciding, what your project is and everything else. Oh, and oh, well, we're, <laughs> everybody's, <laughs> wow. oh, everybody's seeing, saying it. Um, seeing so many names that I recognize that I send packages to, and, and it's so fun <laughs> to just go, oh, Linda. Look at that, let me go back. Lee. Oh my gosh, I can't Lee. read that fast. Yeah, I gotta go again. So I'm going to do it. Oh, I'm sorry. No, well, we okay. Can I can do Laura, tell us where you are. Pussy. I'm in Edinburgh, Scotland. <laughs> So it's um it's seven seven ish here. It's late. It's getting it's gonna get dark. I'm actually a little worried. I'm gonna lose my light, and you're oh, not gonna okay. see yeah. me. Oh. No, Kate, Kate and I are in Milton, Connecticut. Yeah, I'm in, oh. I'm in Ann Arbor, Michigan. So look at that. We have people from New Mexico, Atlanta, Portland, Baton Rouge, uh, Westport. Oh, oh, hi, Eureka. Uh, in Paris. Oh, oh, oh Madeleine, you there? Harry, yeah. <laughs> um, we have Vancouver, Bridgeport, Seattle. Oh, and I'm going to need Veneto, and we will ask you. An Italian in German, a Paola. It's got to be another Paola. <laughs> yeah, Italian in Germany, it's her. Wonderful Paola. Yes. Uh, ciao. I'm originally from Connecticut, but live in London. Okay, California. Oh. Uh, Finger Lakes region, beautiful. Chicago, Michigan, Kirkland. South of France, uh, oh, Germany. Houston, you say Houston or Houston? Houston. Houston, Houston we have a problem. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> in, 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 in Italy, from, we say Houston, I don't know you're why. From, you're from um, Bellingham, yes? Who? No, Seattle area. Bellingham. Who? Aya Fredrickson. Oh. oh. Yeah, sorry, she's on oh, mute. I'm making your talk. Yeah. Island. Just yeah. go like this. That's us. <laughs> San Francisco, Santa Barbara, mm -hmm. Hudson Valley. Um, joining from Atlanta, Connecticut, uh, Indianapolis, yeah, Albuquerque. Oh That's my God, there. like La Mancha, Spain. Ooh. Oh, uh, another, oh, another Paris. Uh, uh, Ontario, Laguna Beach in California, Vermont. I didn't get my Julie Hoover project together in time for today, the Pearson. So I'm working on a current project. Perfect. It's okay. It's okay. It's all allowed. Oh, I'm an Alaskan living in the Chicago suburbs, Nitin Blume, Bellingham, Pascagoula. Hmm. Is that how you pronounce it? Making post. 
Victoria, Vancouver. Oh my God, Belgium. Oh, welcome. Uh, I haven't seen the chat window. Thanks for the quick ship of yarn, Julie. I got it today. Oh, good. Yeah, Erica's knitting Luca, Massachusetts, Illinois, Vancouver, uh, and Canada, Austin. Oh my, the kid goes uh, Italian in France. Uh, ciao, Dora. Uh, <laughs> is uh, you know the italian contingent has to be uh, <laughs> represent yeah so, just in case people can't find it or don't know if you go to the bottom of your screen there's a, a options options tab and I there's a stop video mouse over it for it to pop up if you click on the chat that's how you can see the chat on the side of your screen there yeah is uh and they keep going. So I have oh, baby, oh Bainbridge Island, nice. Yeah, I, I want to go there Me too. And it keeps going. I'm knitting my second gude using Shibui Reed, nice. Illinois, and it keep. Okay, we yeah. have from all wow. over. That's amazing. How this yeah. knitting world can bring people together, and a Julie design can bring people all together in a happy way. Yes. I mean, you both you and Paula, Julie and Paula, you must love shipping things out and seeing where people come from. You should put it, have a big map and pin out where. Yes. Oh, that's, that's a good idea. That's a good yeah. idea. I yes. That. Yeah. Is, and we love, especially when people uh, misspell their addresses. <laughs> <laughs> Oops, and it takes like three days for me to figure it out. Like, oh, that's the worst. <laughs> I, I recently sent a package to the UK and the, it didn't have the postal code. So they tried to verify it. And I didn't realize that it just entered the postal code and it was the wrong postal code. Oh, thankfully, <laughs> thankfully yeah. it got sorted out, but oh my gosh. Yeah. Anyway, but yes, it is it's nice tough. to see. It. I think when we started, it was actually very nice to see the color the people chose. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, I don't know how many of the participants are also um, on the rivalry group. The, the, so the rivalry group, maybe you, Kate and uh, Aoki, Molora, you should mention the rivalry group and how it works. So um, the rivalry group is under forums on rivalry, and it's under our group, the, uh, under our, yeah. I guess, group page called um, The Knitting Posse. And you can ask questions. Julie and Paula have both been on there frequently and will answer your questions. Um, it is a little hard to follow those forums because the answers to the questions don't come like right in order. So you have to kind of, if, if you ask a question, you'll see a little thing up in the top and it will say like one reply or two replies. If you click on that, you can see the replies to that specific question but that's a really good place to see what other people are knitting and what yarns people are using and um, if you have questions it's a good place to do that also if you want to post on instagram our hashtag is jh for julie hoover myak posse k-a-l so um that's uh and, and you know, and we do, yeah. yeah, and we do have people that don't want to be on Ravelry, and you can still join. Yes. The, you know, the, yeah. you still join yeah. the Knit Along. You just, and you don't have even have to be on social media. Just let us know. You can email us. Whatever exactly. is good yeah. is oh. not everybody wants to be on a video. Not everybody wants to be on social media or go on Ravelry for other reasons. So, so by all means, and you're all welcome throughout. So the the, the Knit Along is going to last two months. So mm -hmm. today's official cast on, but whether you already cast on before or whether you're Laura. going to cast on. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Or if you're basically finished with done. <laughs> Almost. <laughs> or if you're just <laughs> making it. I, I cast on too. I, she's not the only one. Sorry, Laura, what do you say? I said it's a testament to how excited I was about it. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's true. That's true. And we will start soon. Um, and so anything, anything goes. There are no rules whatsoever. We are going to have three meetings and uh, we posted them. We posted a date because right now I don't remember them, but one is in May and one is in June. And uh, so we are going to have like a check-in in May so that we can, you can ask more questions. You can let us know how you're doing. So May is going to be more about you and June is going to be all about you. So we will be 
we will shut up and let you. Well, I'm, I just read a couple of questions. I'll just answer yeah. quickly. Sure. So, Sigrid, no, you do not need to register for the KAL. You just, just join in, just join in and, and participate as much or as little as you want. Um, and then there was a question before that. Nadine asked, I'm knitting Klein and would like to know whether the cast on she uses here looks different from a tubular cast on. I, I believe, I I've unfortunately don't have all my patterns memorized, <laughs> but I believe Klein um, begins with the, <laughs> the working on. Uh, I believe it's a one by one knitting, uh, one by one ribbing, and I typically do an alternating uh, knitted cast on and purled cast on, alternating to mimic um, a knit and purl from the edge, it rolls over. It's not technically a tubular cast on, but I find it less fussy and it has a beautiful um, a beautiful effect at, at the edge, or it doesn't have a hard edge. It has a nice edge that transition. It has this effect. Yes. Uh, <laughs> no, no, not that's a no? that's a long tail. Okay, down. You lost the point. Oh. Okay, it's down. No, no, no. <laughs> I don't, okay. I, I don't know whether I have. Oh, I do. Oh, if you want to put your swatch out. Okay. It's, it's in here. It's like it up and down. So this has the edge. Oh, okay. Is Can it, you make it a little bit closer to the camera? I don't know. It's it's gonna have yeah. a focusing, I think. I believe yeah. this this is one by one and see how it doesn't have a hard edge, it rolls to the to the back side. So it's it's not a tubular cast on, but um, tu tubular cast ons have a tendency to flay a little bit, where the knit yeah. on the front side transitions to the purl on the back side. It kind of spreads out and does a weird thing. This keeps it together in a nice little point. The knit stitches, so you can Somebody see asked what, it doesn't uh, what garment like that, that is, Julie. So that's my preference, but if you yeah. prefer a different cast on for any of my patterns, feel free to substitute. I'm not offended by that. Good thing, because I didn't do the long tail cat pearl. I started it. Well, I won't forgive you, but I'll forgive anyone. Okay, thanks. I no. did it. No, I did it. And then I lost uh, the um, long tail pearl is actually fun. Yeah, it was fun. Yeah, yeah. once but you learn the motion. The phone ring like, and I put it down yeah, and, and it can't. Yeah, you have to do it all at once. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, so while we're on the subject of cast on, that one is I like because it it um, it sets up your your cast on is always your foundation row of anything, mm -hmm. um, especially a bottom up sweater that's not going to have any additional finishing. I feel like cast ons are super important, and you have a a lot more tools um, toward cast ons than you do bind offs. So when I start, knit, you know, the long two, like for example, two by two, you would cast on two long tail, cast on two long tail pearl method. And that foundation mimics a knit stitch and, and pearl stitch as you're going along so that when you begin your ribbing, you've already set that up to look like a two knits, two pearls. So, so that's what I did. Yeah. Yes. Okay, can I show it now? <laughs> yes. Oh yeah, I'm sorry, I didn't mean you couldn't show it. Yes, that looks perfect. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. Can, you can see how the pearl stitch is a pearl. Yes. Cast they look like yeah. a pearl. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there it is. Yeah. Um, Julie, there was somebody was asking. Uh, I think it's Alicia. Beautifully done. Sorry. Julie, somebody was asking what was the garment? You just showed the ribbon part. What was the garment? Oh, that this, is, uh, this is the Colvin DK sweater. Oh, man. Oh, put that on the list. This is the I actually made it. This is the back. It has a nice uh, angle back shoulder. Oh, pretty. Oh, beautiful. And a sort of a modified drop shoulder. Set I wear that sweater. It's a set-in sleeve, but it's a little bit yeah. off the shoulder. So. I wear that one to work. I work at a garden nursery outside. It's so comfortable. It's so durable. It's, yeah. it's a good workhorse sweater for me. I loved it so much. I knitted it. I did two. I did one in a more of a worsted to Aaron weight. And then this, this was the second version of it because mm -hmm. I wanted something lighter weight. So. Yeah, it, the we'll one probably I probably end up doing a fingering version at some point. God, forget it. <laughs> I'm afraid. So, um, is there another question? Let's go back. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, there, there are there are quite a lot of comments, but I just wanted to say something, Julie. Uh, I think because somebody was asking. Uh, again, not only you know the only rule of the knit along is that you choose a pattern from Julie. 
Yep. Anything else is no rules whatsoever. You can I'm use sorry. whatever yarns <laughs> that you want. <laughs> she ruined in. my pile of sweaters. Julie's patterns are timeless. They and yes. they're, they're yeah. gorgeous. Um, yeah. There was another question I just saw. Um, Andrea, I think is how you say it. Um, she's still swatching. She's done three swatches. Good for her. And every wow. swatch seems to be 10 stitches per two inches. And she needs 11. She started with a needle size five and she's now trying a size two. Wow. Um, <laughs> what is she, need? Andrea, what are you knitting? Uh, so uh, uh, Andrea, you also have to pay attention to your row not just the stitch. So as you're, I'm, I'm, a, I'm just gonna take a guess that as you're dropping needle sizes, your rows are getting closer and closer together. So you're all, that's probably what's changing the most in your swatch. So at some point you're gonna have to compensate um, where you pull your fab, you know, you pull your fabric lengthwise, which compresses your stitches. Does that make sense? Any, Say that again. I see a lot of people with a mouth open. As so. an example, see how um, ribbing has a tendency to be like an accordion; it gets narrower. So, if I were to hold this without stretching it, you can see the the rows are 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 um, a certain distance apart. But if I do this, my rows are getting closer together. My stitches are going further apart. If I stretch this way. My stitches get closer together, but my rows get further apart. So in a swatch, if you're getting too many stitches, but you have, if you're getting not enough stitches and you have too many rows, you can stretch lengthwise, which gives you fewer, fewer uh, more stitches. Per so you could manipulate your swatch is what you're saying. That's what I'm saying, yeah. And I go into that um, on a blog post on my website. It's, it's called Making a Swatch. If you click on the journal section of my website, look for that post. I go way into the detail about how that works. And shall we say that we actually is, we all met over a swatch class? We did. We did. <laughs> we did. It was Laura's highlight of the year. It was Laura's highlight I, of her life. <laughs> I seem to remember that differently. I just gave a nice talk where I talked a little bit about swatching and, and that's all people remember. <laughs> well, I mean, people were flabbergasted just to look at your swatches because yeah. they're a work of art. You know, they're people beautiful. swatch and they do swatch this much and say, yeah, yeah, I got it. And they move on and they start to-, to Like start. that? Yeah, exactly. This that's is really big. Cute. It's huge. Uh, I'll give you credit for getting Thanks, bigger than you probably were doing. Totally that, did. That's still. Julie, can you just pull one of your swatches at random? Anything? Oh, yeah, yeah. One. I, I have a few. I know. It's going to look, it's gonna look <laughs> like a throw compared to that. Yeah. yeah. And Alicia, the project does not need to be finished by the end. Yes. Really, literally, the only rule is to knit a Julie Hoover project. <laughs> yes, yes, and I have fun and have and you fun. You don't even oh, have yeah. to finish it. Just no, finish. no, if, uh, I don't think mine's gonna be finished. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Hmm. This is the same yarn. I tried two different needle sizes to I'm see halfway which, there. which fabric halfway. I prefer. I always do more than one swatch because I I like to see what happens to the fabric when I change gauge. So this is a sort of a tweedy yarn. I don't know if I pulled the most interesting swatches out. Um, Julie, how do you label your swatches so you remember like what size? I keep a spreadsheet. Mm -hmm. um, and then each of my bins are a usually <laughs> specific yarn. Uh, she keeps yarn a bin. spreadsheet for swatches. Jesus. I do that too. Can I show it's you what super, I did? It's I, super I, I important for me to do that because I'm nuts. creating a library of fabric when I'm swatching. So oh, I, I reference that, you know, so. Uh, so I, I always put on my it. spreadsheet, I put what yarn I used. Um, I, yeah. I'm going off the top of my head, but I, I put the needle size that I cast on and how many stitches I cast on, how many rows I worked. I always work um, a gar one stitch garter stitch edge, which I, have, I, don't, I ignore. Um, I don't do a big border of garter stitch like a lot of people do because I want to know how much what, is, what the fabric's doing without stabilizing the edge. So I watch to see how much is it curling. And if you do the, the garter stitch border, you don't have that information in your swatch. So um, so I just cast on and knit, but I do put that one garter stitch in there just because it 
it helps me when I put my uh, blocking wires in. <clears throat> and then I only measure inside the two salvage edges. I mean, uh, yeah, Julie, let me. And, and, then I, and then I document what was the size of the swatch as I was knitting, you know, like before I blocked it. I lay it down and I measure it. And then I'm always trying to achieve a certain dimension of fabric. And that's where the manipulation comes in, where if I never tried to smooth it out or whatever, I just plop it down, it'll, it'll measure one gauge. And then I pick it up the next day, I could plop it a different and it might fall a little different. And then I'm counting a different, um, I'm counting different numbers of stitches in different rows than I did the day before. And that gets really confounding when you're trying to achieve a certain gauge, right? So fabric, fabric manipulation is always critical when, it, um, when you're a knitter and you don't have that information unless you properly swatch. So that's why it's so, I mean, it's, so, it's important for many reasons, but that's the big one. It's, it sets you up with an insurance policy that your project is gonna turn out how it's intended to. And, hmm. you know, so. Uh, Julie, let me so read take, the question. Take and for what it's worth. Right. Sorry, Julie, mm -hmm. let me read a question and a comment. First, a comment from Scott says, the swatches that were passed around at the Mayak event changed my swatch in life. The oh. knot technique to remember which needle use was the best. That's the comment. So that was yeah. a nice class. One nice. other question, does Julie include swatch yardage in her yarn yes. requirement for her pattern and in her kits? Absolutely, I do. I, I factor in uh, when I've, when I've calculated yardage, I factor in what the sample took, then I then I know what the stitch and row um, grams were. And then I also weigh my swatches. I, I always knit more than one swatch too. So that gets factored in. And then I add another, depending on uh, if it's a cable pattern or a stockinette, I'll go anywhere from five to 10 to 12% extra for knitter variants, especially in, in like a texture or cable sweater. Even if you think you get gauge, everyone's cables are tighter or looser, and so it can eat up more or less yarn. So that that's why sometimes you'll say, "Well, I had so much yarn left over, or I didn't have enough yarn." Uh, even if you get gauge, it still can um, little things like that can can make a difference. So I always overestimate another additional uh, amount just to try to try to cover for that. So. Yeah. Um, Julie, uh, there was another question yeah. from Carmen. Uh, she's working on the terrace, which is a pattern Ooh. on a three by three rib. What is your favorite technique for maintaining a neat knit to purl transition? This one. Ooh. I love this wrap. Oh my gosh. It's three by three rib with a little lace detail every, I don't know, 30, 30 some rows, I think. That's uh, so the technique, uh, you mean as you're going along knit to purl to, I, I don't know, I just go. If I notice, I, I pay attention to my knitting. So if I notice a loose stitch, I'll, I'll tighten it up a little and pull the slack so that it, um, can you explain what problem you're having? And maybe I could give you a tip. So what was her name, Kate? Um, Carmen, I think. Nope. Yeah, hi. Okay, I, right. I'm just finding that with with the Mayak, I mean, if it, maybe if it were stickier yarn, it would be a little bit different. But I was getting a bit. Well, I've corrected it. I actually pulled it out, and it, but I was I was getting a sort of. Uh oh. Uh -oh. We we can't hear you, Carmen. Oh no. Oh, I think you pulled it. Oh, I think sorry. Put, yeah. So, um, so right now what I'm doing is just giving it a little tug, although I've seen online, some people suggest instead of wrapping over the needle, the purl stitch, you should wrap it clockwise instead of counterclockwise and then fix the stitch on the backside. So of course, you don't have that problem. So never mind. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It could be the way it could definitely be your technique uh, needs a little, something um altered just just to compensate so you're saying they're getting loose pearl stitches and yeah, then well, like, there, were, there was i fixed it so you can't see now but yeah i, I was you know that this this knit stitch here would open up a little bit and then it'd have a longer leg going into the pearl i'm not um yeah. i'm not Can just you see speaking yeah. we no, actually but, it's just oh, there you are okay yeah. no <laughs> okay sorry now you're on camera <laughs> okay, so I, I I was getting a looser 
knit uh, here kind of open and then oh where the leg it. where the leg right. of the outside leg of the knit is loose exactly a lot of that can work its way out as you block, block it. When, okay. you, when you soak the fabric and it's and you're blocking it just smooth that you know okay. it, and that may it may not be an issue it may just be in the well, I'm, I'm fabric. assuming it won't be because it's you know it'll be wrapped around my neck anyway yeah. but i i just thought i'd ask if you had a preferred technique so as a and then when, you, when you go out. from the you finish your last niche you're about to do the pearl i do you bring your exactly. yarn forward to pearl or do you leave it behind yes no i bring it forward yeah so do i so maybe yeah. just snug that up before you yeah. start your pearl stitch yeah mm -hmm. not too tight but maybe just a little because you don't want to over tighten right laura did you want to say something uh, i just know that patty lyons has done a thing on that 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 the transition from a knit to a pearl can distort the previous, the last knit stitch. Exactly. And she recommends, she yeah, does especially have, in cables. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, especially in cables. Mm -hmm. um, and I think she's one of the people I know that discussed what you were talking about, Carmen, that instead of, you know, cause it's, it's, there's a big motion to go from the knit in front to the pearl and, um, mm -hmm you know, obviously you could give it a try and see if it works, but um, I think snugging up is easier, but I, I've, I, I've I do, I do that too. I bring the yarn to the front. I actually use my thumb to wrap the pearl, the yarn around over the needle instead of my finger. So I find that it gives me a little more control of the tension. Try, try that. So I've been doing uh, on this, on my swatch, I had the messy knit stitch next to the pearl. So I looked it up and what I've been doing on this is what a few people have said. I knit the, the, let me think, the, the next, I knit the pearl stitch after the knit stitch um, and wrap it the wrong way, wrap it clockwise, not counterclockwise. And yeah. then when you go back on the wrong side, you knit it through the back loop. Oh, because it shortens the stitch. Yeah. It shortens yeah. the amount of yarn. Don't forget to untwist it. No, because it was, yeah. it's when you go back uh, and on this pattern, it's pretty easy because the pearls kind of stand out on the wrong right. side. The knit stitches, it, it's on there backwards. It's oriented so wrong. Yeah. You right. see it. Yeah. Right. Right. It easily. Hmm. But it did neaten up the, um, the transition. And that was when you did your cable crossover. Correct. Right. Yeah. Well, that's a good tip. Yeah. 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 So shall we dive, uh, shall we talk a little bit about uh, Julie's uh, uh, design? Uh, why do you design and how you started just a little bit? Oh, no. And then we can just a little bit. And then we can go on around. to uh, what are we knitting? I mean, what are you knitting? What, you know, what are your project? So oh, you, you want me to talk about the sweater I'm wearing? As well, question? sure, but to maybe talk about you just for a couple of minutes. No, that's my favorite subject. Yeah, I know. That's why I ask. <laughs> She's going to text me later. Say, Did everybody see how red my face is? <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, okay. So where do I even start? I I have um I. I have always been sort of a fiber nerd from a young age. I, when I first had, it, it was actually my grandmother, my, my paternal grandmother, she's Norwegian and she knew all kinds of, hand, you know, handiwork things from, um, we, we, I remember one summer we stitched embroidered, uh, we embroidered pillowcases and, and uh, she also taught me to crochet when I was quite young. I never loved crochet and for whatever reason, she never put knitting needles in my hands. So it took me till I was 40 to discover I was a knitter. Wow. But all along I had studied, I, um, I had learned and taught myself to sew. Uh, I was making my own clothes as a, as a teenager. And then I studied clothing and textiles in college and have, I have a degree in that. So I, um, you know, that, that it was, that's something I'm very passionate about and always was, but I, after college, I, I started working in um, the fashion industry on the retail side. I, I knew, uh, I knew the, the architecture of knitting, obviously um, more from an industrial side than a hand knitting side. Uh, so fast forward years, years and a couple of career changes in between where I was an art director for about 10 years. Um, where I, you know, I learned kind of the skills 
to, that put all the things I do together to look pretty. <laughs> um, that was something that I did. So by the time I learned to knit, it was all of a sudden the circle was like over here and it was just another little corner to turn before I put all that together and was like, I think I was meant to do this. So, or this found me at last or what, however you want to say it. But so I, um, that was when I had made a few friends. Um, I don't remember what year that would have been. Maybe, maybe somewhere around 2009, because I had had my third child and that was one of the reasons I started knitting. We lived, we lived just north of Anchorage, Alaska and I needed, I needed wow. something. I was burned out with work and had a, a baby and um, that was sort of my zen. To, when I discovered that I was a knitter, I couldn't stop knitting. So then um, I made some friends on Ravelry, like Olga Baraya Kafilin was one of the first people that we found each other. And um, another dear friend is Kirsten Johnstone. She goes by assemblage on, on she's, she's an architect by trade, but she also is a very talented knitwear designer. She's not publishing so much anymore, but I was gravitating to her work because it was it was so close to what I wasn't finding anything that I wanted to knit. So, but except for her things, and so then we became friends. And they all just between her and Olga, they just encouraged me. And I said, like, you know, you're crazy. Why don't you just publish these things you're knitting? And so I got up the courage to just try it. And then one thing led to another. I I, I ran into Jared Flood. Um, at a couple of knitting events and we hit it off and suddenly he asked me to join the Brooklyn Tweed design team. And, and I was still kind of hanging on by thread to my previous career thinking, um, this is, there's no way I could do this full time or take, you know, take it this seriously. But um, after that, I thought, well, now I have to make a decision because I can't, can't do both. So I um, thought long and hard about it and was, I was like, all right, well, I'm 40. <laughs> I'm not getting any younger. So why not, you know? And uh, that's that's where it started for me. So I've been, yeah, so I've been publishing uh, my designs for over 10 years now. Wow. Do you sketch out well, your designs before you start? Sketch my designs? Like, yeah, you have a visual that- Yeah, you sure, sure. Not always, that's not always the first thing um, that happens. So. For me, my process is really all about the fiber. I, that's, like, that's where I start every time. I have the fiber in my hands, I'm swatching. I'm not necessarily thinking about it, a particular design. Sometimes I am, but usually I'm not. The fabric will speak to me at that point and say, you know, and, or I may have thought of a design, but not have found the right fabric for it. So it's just sort of in the back of my head and all of a sudden I'll swatch or, or play with some fat, um, some yarn and then suddenly it, it's just like, oh, wait a minute, what about that idea I had? So let's see if I can put those two together. And so it, eventually I'll marry a yarn uh, yarn and fabric fabrication to a design. Um, She's be a yarn whisperer. Yeah. The yarn doesn't talk to me like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, it should. <laughs> Keep trying. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so then uh, at some point I'll sketch, some, sometimes I don't need to sketch uh, if it's a silhouette or an idea that um, that I've thought about long enough, I, I kind of skip that part, but I don't know if you can, if I can tilt my, you see those sketches over there? Oh yeah, yep. So I do sketch a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. That's just some things that I've, I've, decided I'm gonna do so then at that point sometimes I'll sketch it out just to remind me to I've got things to do <laughs> <laughs> if it's staring at me I have to pay attention to it um my my I find my swatches also I'll leave I'll leave those sometimes I'll throw them in my bag and see how they hold up as far as pilling goes and yeah. um sometimes I pin them to under my a lot of this and see how much wear and tear it can take Wow. Um, yeah, that's important to me. If I'm going to select a yarn and put my name on, you know, that relationship, I want to make sure that uh, it's a it's a yarn that I sanction. In fact, I I mean I I'm not even making this up. So I met Paula 
what TNA your first TNA, first TNA 2013 I believe 2014 yeah it must have been 2013 yeah because I just moved I would moved from Alaska and I was on my way to Ann Arbor and I drove to TNA that, that year um, but anyway, so I zeroed in on your yarn because I, I, I know that the multicolor fun yarn is still in um, popular. I, I didn't, I swore it wouldn't last, but it has. So it's your say. <laughs> but uh, it's not really me. I'm, I have so much more minimal taste that when I find a yarn vendor at TNNA that is not like that, I'm like, whoa, what's going on here? So, um, yeah, so Kirsten Ford, she had left Shibui and was starting just start, she hadn't even launched Wool Folk yet. She yeah. was just kind of showing certain people around at TNA, like, this is what I'm working on. And she dragged me to your booth and said, you need to meet Paula. And, and, and uh, yeah, so that's when we met. That's and how we started. Anastasia yeah. was just a little baby. She was yeah, so I, I, I think it was my second TNA. So it must have been after because my first one, I was pregnant. And that's when I met Kirsten on the first one. And then the second one, I met you. Oh, maybe. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yes, because that, you know. Yeah, my, you definitely had the baby. But... Yes. You know, I had uh, little uh, Anastasia in the boot, <laughs> my shoulder. <laughs> and, uh, so I was trying to, you know, I the didn't know anything. Too. I still didn't know anything about, you know, fi not knitting or fibers or anything else. But I, you know, I was faking it as much as I could. <laughs> <laughs> Fake it till you make it. That's right. Yeah, yeah, I remember. Really I remember you. There was still a lot you didn't you you didn't understand how how it worked at all. Yeah, and and not like, that I okay, do now. This is what we're gonna do. I'm gonna take some of your yarn. I'm gonna design something in it. We're gonna pub I'm gonna publish pattern. You're gonna sell a ton of yarn. <laughs> and she was slowly sort of realized, oh, okay, that's how that's how that yeah, works. Somebody's actually knitting something with a yarn. I think is uh, yeah. I mean, you know, I don't know how it's, many of you know that. Took off, but it took off. It took off. I knew it yes, would. Yeah. Yes, I mean, we don't come from the. You know, the, the reason why we sat in Mayak is not because we were a yarn brand, you know, we wanted to work and we still do working with the Tibetan nomads and that's what we are about. We are a social enterprise. So all of that knitting industry and uh, craziness and beauty, it was very unfamiliar uh, to us. And that's why people asking, you know, but do you knit? I'm like, oh, yeah, I started. Sure. <laughs> I do knit now. I do knit sweaters, but, uh, you know, it was just the yeah. beginning. Well, so then I, you know, you only had the yak at that point, or maybe you had cashmere as well. Oh, yeah, I had, I think I just had the yak in the natural color and the chocolate and then the burgundy, and which the burgundy. Was, uh, yeah. because, yeah, because we don't die on the, you know, we don't bleach, we don't right. have any uh, decoloring process. So I do remember that we had this, uh, the chocolate color, which is the natural color and the burgundy dine on it. And Kirsten Ford loved that burgundy. And she needs something, and that's how then yeah. she brought in, and she brought Olga as well. Oh, right, right. And then uh, Michelle Wang came too. So that's how it started. And I had this core team of four designers that not only liked the yarn, but I think what it is, it was so you believed in the story. And this, this yes, is this is the first oh. sweater. This is the first uh, uh, sample ever that a designer knit with a yarn. Yeah. So I that's the story. knitting this for her project. Yeah, the Piedmont, I love it. Piedmont. Yeah. So this is at a Piedmont in uh, Baby Yak Medium. So and this sweater is how many years old now? 20, probably 2014, yep. maybe. So going on nine years. You tell me if you see a single pill. Yeah. No, and that's something we love about the Mayak yarn. Yeah. I yeah. mean, it's yeah. like it's so when it came time for me to um I, I had kind of secretly wanted to make my first yarn and I didn't know how Paula and, and Andrea would react, but I slowly just kind of brought up the idea of buying fiber from them. And I didn't know what they would say or how they would feel about it, but they were so enthusiastic. So I can't thank you enough because I love your cashmere and yak so much that it was just like, I have to use this fiber or other I'm not doing it. <laughs> Well, that is, uh, you know, for us was really interesting. I mean, of course, you know, we became friends over the years. And I think right. that's one of the nice things, you know, we hang out when we see, we chat, you know, so sure. we don't, don't, don't chat about work. So we know things. So one of my, Julie is one of my daughters. She's nine years old. And she, if you ask her one of the best, best friends, she says Julie Hoover. Oh, 
<laughs> <laughs> so they even chat. So, a little um, bit of both, yeah. Yes. Um, so when Julie, uh, it was funny because I think, you know, first the gratitude that we had towards Julie for putting Mayak on the map, you know, with a couple of the other designers that nobody else, uh, you know, nobody knew about us. And the fact that Julie kept over the years making this beautiful, and we will talk about some of the, some mm -hmm. of the design that, uh, uh, the, that you have. Um, yeah, the show, you do, a little, do you want me to bring out some samples and show? Sure. In okay. the, yeah. So let me just quickly talk about it. And then there's a couple of questions that we will have. So, so uh, yeah. do you see, if somebody asked Julie what her favorite sweater is that she's designed? Oh, no. No, I don't ask that. Yeah. Who's your she's favorite What's your favorite child? Oh, All of that. like saying who my favorite child is. <laughs> not, I can't say it out loud. <laughs> I can say it, but she cannot. Okay, so what's yours? What's I, yours? I have some that are my least favorites. I'd love All to right, that. Yeah. But I don't that's know if not, I should say that either. No, no, no let's not go so there, Judy. <laughs> I don't know. I shouldn't say that either. That could be no, that could let's, that could scrap up some trouble. Um you know, I I uh, I can answer that sort of in a in a roundabout way is Usually, whatever I'm currently working on is kind of my favorite thing until That's I get to where <laughs> until I get to where I have to promote it, and then I just don't want to see it ever again because it's just so <laughs> hard. I have a really hard time with self promotion. I, I I know you wouldn't believe that because I force myself to do it, and if I was doing what I do for myself or someone else, I would be so proud of it, but. By the time I'm done, I just, I'm like, okay, I can't look at this anymore. <laughs> then my next favorite thing is whatever I'm working on next. Good answer. So yes. I get um, excited about the next thing pretty, pretty soon. So I think that's true for a lot of knitters, just in general, not designers, just knitters. You're that so excited be. about the next project. And yeah. And I don't mean to say I'm not extremely proud of it. I am. I would never publish anything that I was, um, wasn't super proud of. I mean, I've had I've had a couple, I will admit there was a couple designs that Brooklyn Tweed published where I was like, please, just please, no, I, please. Because <laughs> it was always a team choice, you know, what went into the collections. We all kind of, you know, saw, uh, and there were, yeah, there's been a couple designs where I'm just like, oh, I would really like to just <laughs> delete that one. But whatever. all right, then you said it. <laughs> I said it, but I didn't say which one. So hopefully, you know. and it's, you know, I think that's natural. I'm not, yes. you know, I, I think, I think everyone has things in life where they, yeah, of course. You know. Yeah. But that also that's one of the reasons why you started your own, you know, before you were just designing. And then when you approached us, you decided that you want your own yarn with, you know, with the best uh, available fiber in the world, of course, with my yak. But, uh, uh, yeah. it's, uh, and, and I mean, I think if anybody else would have approached us and say, hey, I want to take your fiber and make my own yarn, I would say, well, are you crazy? I mean, why would you? That's ours, yeah. Why would we uh, like create a direct competitor to us? You know, you must right. be nice. But Julie asked, and it took us three seconds. And we said, of course, whatever you want. Well, and we were, but we talked, we did talk about it because that was important to me. I did not want us to feel like we were ever going to yeah. have a, that competitiveness. Yeah. It was really like, what can I produce that would complement what you're doing, but not compete? So that's why I chose the 50-50 blend, which is what I wanted. Well, actually, what I really wanted to do was uh, pure cashmere tweed. Ooh. And then I realized how much that would cost. And, <laughs> and then I... Then I realized how much knitters would hate me. So, um, so then I thought, okay, well, the yak brings the price down, but it doesn't compromise the quality or the or the finished result at all. In fact, it might even improve it. So then that was that was the first tweed, and then I introduced four colors. And a DK way, it was sort of. A, I feel like there's a there's a little bit of a hole in um, the luxury yarn market in that DK weight. I feel like there's a lot of fingering or there's a lot mm -hmm. of Aran weight, but not so much DK. So I was really really happy with the result of that. But of course, my favorite weight ever is fingering. So I had my second yarn had to be fingering, and then I was very consciously trying to make a more affordable yarn um, and something a little more 
a little more rustic, but still beautiful. You know, um, I have a beautiful hand, but a little, not so much, uh, so much the softness that you get in the yak and cashmere. I wanted to have a little more loft and a little more tooth. So yeah, that one turned out really great too. I'm super happy well, Kate, with it. Tell them, uh, you've been, knit Kate's been knitting with your studio too. Yeah, yeah, it's really different, right? Yeah. You would, you would, is, have yeah. you done the Studio One to compare? I have not done the Studio okay. One, but actually one of the, um, one of my knitters in my knitting class ordered it to make a hat for the knit along. And um, it, it's very different from the oh, Studio yeah. Two. Very yeah. different. Um, yeah, but I, I'm really enjoying knitting with this. It has beautiful stitch definition. It's not like splitty at all. And it does like soften up, like the more you manipulate it and you, the right. more you're knitting with it. Right, right. Yeah. There is 30% cashmere in there, but it's not the dominant, uh, no. not the dominant fiber. Well, it's but my it's not it's, really cashmere. It's my young cashmere, which it is, is yeah. It's not the best of the best. It's not just any cashmere. <laughs> Well, it's not just any wool either. It's uh, yeah, 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 right, yeah cool. right, right, right. <laughs> um, there were a couple other questions. Yeah. Julie, um, she's new to the garter selvage edge. Is there a good video to watch for seaming? Do you have a seaming video on your site? I have, uh, if you go to my website and in the footer, there's a link to techniques. Mm -hmm. I have in there, so I don't have videos, but that I've made personally, but um, my relationship with Pearl Sew over the years, ah, I, yeah. I'll sneak them into their patterns so they make the video for me. And and they're they're set up to do that so well. So I'm like, okay, I'm gonna put this technique. Can you make a video? So then there's links to the if they've made a video for me for one of my patterns, the link is there. But some of my seeming links take you to to pages that have photos or illustrations. But they're very clear and they're how I do it. So it's it's like sanctioned by, I'm not just linking to some random YouTuber. I'm, I've thoughtfully chosen these as this is how I do it. Okay. Um, so, um, and I'm also thinking I might, this year I might uh, introduce a, um, an, a, like a Zoom class of some sort. And to, to, to I, cause I feel like I'm known for sweaters and I'm very specific, my patterns are, are not the common top-down sweaters. Um, I don't do that. And I would love to demystify uh, that, the way I approach sweaters to people um, and maybe do like a sweater, maybe have like a sweater workshop where it's several classes or just do, let's talk about finishing or let's talk about swatching, you know, and just people can pick which subject they want. I would love that. No, I'm not, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not saying this is gonna happen like tomorrow, but I have been thinking that maybe I could uh, could go that direction. You're, you're getting a lot of comment. Yes, please do it. The classic would be amazing, fantastic. I'm in, so you have to do it now. She will do it because <laughs> okay. she said that. Okay, I'm holding you to it. <laughs> yes. Uh, I'm holding your names down. Yeah. Ella, someone asked, um, is there a Mayak yarn that could be used for Gemma? Uh, Gemma, uh, no. Oh, well, actually, maybe um, Gemma, Gemma. Maybe Koopa. Thank you, Julie. <laughs> so, no oh. competition. I'm saying no. Just use Gemma. Gemma is beautiful in in. No, uh, Koopa in the could blend. work. I but think Koopa, Koopa could work, work, but the fabric would feel quite different because yeah. it's, it's a cotton and yak, and it's it, yeah, the Koopa a little is thicker, yeah. so that the stitches would be more dense. Yeah. So you might have you might have to adjust needle size. Um, to what get about the would the would the lace help double be too thin? Oh. Lace held double would be too, way too thick. Okay. Okay. Oh. Yeah. okay. yeah, this, my yarn, uh, the Studio Blend number two is a light fingering. So it's in between fingering and lace. Yeah, so the Coupa there, yeah. yeah. There's actually another question for, um, for, uh, for us. Uh, um, got the sample of Yak and Silk, marvelous, thank you. But it comes in small skeins of 25 grams, not very practical for a big project. Do you plan to do it in a bigger skein? No. That's the quick answer. <laughs> we have, uh, I think that this is the yarn that a lot of people use for like shawls, uh, color work, yokes, and uh, smaller summer stuff. And uh, keeping them on a 25, uh, uh, 25 gram skeins allow us, allow a lot of people to use multiple colors and they all blend so well together. 
and uh, uh, I think so, no, we will not do a 50 gram skeins. But the good things about a yarn is, uh, is if you do the uh, speed splicing, it just, you don't see it at all. It goes so quick and so well that you can just, you know, you even when you wind them up, you can just wind one after the other and make your big bowl or bake your big, yeah, cake. And, and so you don't have to worry about it later and you will not see the difference. And even if you pull, it will stay there. I don't know. So maybe that's, uh, that helps. Um, shall we talk about, uh, okay. A lot of people are asking Julie what you're wearing right now. So let's start with okay, that. Okay, I just text or I just put oh. that in the chat that this is my growth sweater. Um, and it, yes, this, the, this is the original yarn um, that I used for the publish. Sorry, Paula, it's not yours. Um, oh, this is season alpaca. Still and, pretty. Ah. Um, to get on my tippy toes. I'm knitting this sweater. The reason I'm wearing it is because I'm, this is my knit along project. Ooh, nice. And I'll hold it against me so it doesn't get transparent, but I'm using my Studio Blend number one yarn. Wow. The, the color slate tweed for my knit, for my knit along project. And Beautiful. I've already finished the back piece. Um, Get going, Kate. I have a second project that I'm doing as well. This is a new design I'm working on. Oh, yeah. stripes. Oh. Right so maybe, if I, maybe if I finish it at the end, I'll, sh I'll give you a sneak preview months. Oh, stripes maybe. forever. I love yeah. stripes. Uh, yeah, team stripes for sure. Yeah, yeah. For sure. <laughs> I haven't done stripes in a while. I love stripes, yeah. but I yeah. haven't done them yeah. for a while. So I thought it was time. Yeah. Well, it, going back. In Sorry. And, and my yarn one? colors work so great together. I'm just like excited about combining them, more, you know, more than one color in a design. So, is that right? in your studio blend too? Yes. That this, one? this one. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> I just want you to so going back to the to the to the um, our uh, light fingering. You know, we love stripes, and that's why our yarn, like you know, you can put all of them. We just finished one sample with all from somebody else and uh, it looks amazing with all of the stripes together so <laughs> yeah <laughs> sorry um laura shall we start from you what 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 did you pick as your project for the nita so, um i picked the piedmont because it had been in my uh favorite folder for a very long time and when i realized that it was knit in the mayak medium it was a done deal and i'd also seen paula wearing um I think it's a Thea Coleman design uh, in yes. this beautiful, beautiful cherry red. Um, so I actually cast on a couple of weeks ago and um, I have finished <laughs> oh my gosh. the body, um, which is knit from the bottom in the round up to the armholes and then knit back and forth. I haven't um, sewed it together yet. So then I just need to knit the sleeves block it, sew it together, and then add the neckline. But this is so beautiful. And I, I yeah, the color. the color is just so, so good. Here's my somewhat baby swatch. Oh, is, yes. that, um, is that like a cherry red or a, that's the amount it's of red. Red. Cherry it's red. a very, it's a very blue red, not an orangey red, which is the only red that I can even think about wearing, but it's, it's really, really pretty. Okay, I don't know what, yeah. yeah, dirty. Um, this and was the I, sweater that I was wearing, right? Oh, yeah, that color. And I was obsessed with that color. And that's also a beautiful sweater. Um, People are going to so, stick a comment a mile away. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's yeah. the brightest color you've ever knit with, Laura. Yeah, right? for sure. But it's going to be, I mean, just the combination. Um, I, I, I want to say, I understand that a sweater like this is, it's a huge investment in time. But when you talk about when you're showing yours, Julie, and saying that it's seven years old or close to it and it doesn't have a 17, pill on it. I think. What? Yeah. 17. No. How many? I think it's more uh, than The that. Piedmont has to be at least nine years old. Okay. I, I, I mean, the sample be, may even be older than that, but I published, yeah. I think I published in 2014, so. And I think the three of us could all attest to the fact that if you knit something, I know I've knit things in the past that after a few wearings, I, I don't want to wear anymore because the yarn pilled so much. And, you know, that's really disheartening. So to make the investment and to make, to knit a very classic sweater that I know I'll wear for a long time um, 
it, it's, you know, it's worth it. It's so yeah, beautiful. I would take that even further just in my own philosophy of what I do is I take, I take my work incredibly seriously. I don't necessarily take myself that seriously, but, but what I, when I'm doing my work, that's like, you know, I'm think I'm thinking about my customers. I'm also thinking about what's important to me as a brand. And, and I've always felt that if you're, you know, if you're creating, like I, I'm creating fashion when I'm designing, I'm, I'm creating fashion. I'm creating the absolute best version of what uh, my, my vision is that I couldn't even walk into the, like the highest end store and find something nicer because I know that the care and the time I'm putting into that has, to, you know, you have to value that. Now that doesn't mean that every knitting project has to be that serious because I know sometimes knitters just want something quick and of course they're they're not going to use their most treasured yarn for something they're going to give away as a gift. But if you're going to knit one of my sweaters, I I'm I'm thinking about what's what is the the best highest possible bar for this sweater and that's why I always almost always knit in pieces because I can control the the um the outcome much better than I, and I get that I get like you just want to knit real fast in the round and all that, but there's no structure. There's upside down stitches. It just makes my head explode. I can't look at <laughs> stitches going upside down. So that's why it's a non-starter for me because I can tell when a sweater has been knit from the top down because all the stitches are upside down or or it, the ones that really blow my mind are bottom up and then the sleeves top down. Right. But um, anyway. It, like I said, I'm not judging. I'm just saying for me, that is, uh, that's a choice I make. And I know a lot of people ask me, can I knit this top down? And um, no, I just, <laughs> the answer's no. I just that's think if true. you want to do that, there's a billion of those that so you can yeah. surely find one. So, um, so, but anyway, I, I just want to, if for anybody who, you know, who, who might have this question, like, why does she always do make us do in pieces and seam? It's because I really feel strongly that if you're going to invest, you know, like Laura said, in, in the quality material and the time, um, yes, it does take longer, but in, in the fraction, the fraction of time it takes you to knit it over the lifetime of that sweater is, is going to, it's going to fit better. It's going to hold up better as well as you wash it. And, um, you know, there's just so many reasons to, to embrace, uh, garment construction and seeming that um I you know I could go on but I want I'm well, losing I power already, the like, best designers that way I've like if I saw a, top, a bottom up sweater in pieces it makes me nervous as a newer knitter because I'm, right. I'm afraid what if I finish all this and it doesn't fit, fit? but every right. time I've knit one of your patterns Julie I have to trust it the pattern and guess what it seems beautifully at the end. It's like a puzzle piece. Yeah. Putting it together. Yeah. The oh, that's piece. great. Yeah. Yeah. I wouldn't have published it if I hadn't, um, you know, engineered it properly. So, but, but, you know, you it's a teamwork situation because you, you know, if you, if you're not knitting on gauge, then yeah, it's going to come to your knees and that, but that, you know, that that's, you have to do the work to, to get the outcome that I've set you up for, I hope. So, so yeah, I'm thrilled to hear that. Uh, can I, uh, there is a, a comment on uh, on the chat that I'm not sure whether, Julie, you can answer. Um, she says they love the yak fiber, the mayak, or oh, the yak fibers. Um, she doesn't talk about uh, mayak. It doesn't peel. It doesn't have much memory. It doesn't have much memory, though. Mayak, definitely. Our, our yarn really has memory. But I was going to say, I don't know if I agree with that. Maybe it's another yak brand that uh, Chris, you're using. I'm not sure because our one, you know, you it goes back to, into shape perfectly. Yeah. I suppose it depends how much ten. I mean, how much are you over expecting it to stretch? Yeah. Because at some point, it's gonna it's gonna lose its crimp, but. Yeah, you know, I've, found, I've actually found your okay. yak to be some of the most stable. I it barely changes from yeah. working gauge to my finish gauge. There's hardly any, which yeah. tells me there's a lot of memory in that yarn. But it's it's probably maybe I don't know, Chris. If it's my yak you're referring to, maybe it's another no. yak. There's a lot of yak maybe on the market. And I should have. This is Chris. I oh. should have mentioned that it's not my yak. Um, 
it's and it's a hundred percent yak so maybe that's the difference too i don't know it just didn't retain a lot of memory in the ribbing but i love the fiber because it's lightweight and it's warm and it doesn't pill that so could have I, a lot to do with the well the quality of the fiber itself but it could also have a lot to do with the uh the milling process yeah the process how industry. much twist was added to each ply and then and then you know what right uh, was it over processed? Was there any finishing um, put in it that's made it more slippery so it, it doesn't uh, hold? And I'm knitting, knitting with Koopa now and it's fine. It's oh, lovely. Good. <laughs> <laughs> it's lovely. Yeah, I don't think you wouldn't find that problem with my ex. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, I didn't mean to scare everybody off. No, no, no I, wow, that wasn't my I know it's good. And it's nice to talk about it because that's one of the, you know, for, especially for us uh, is uh, having the feedback from knitters is what keep us going. And this is how we kept improving. We can, you know, we can come out with new um, weight, new colors, new everything, just because we, we we keep talking to people. If we weren't just in my bubble trying to 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 run this company, I would have already run it to the ground. I guess. <laughs> it's <laughs> true because you remember when you changed the twist on your medium yeah. and you had sent me some that because yeah. uh, I had been I had ran out of the original yarn you gave me. I knew immediately something had changed, and yeah. and you're like, oh, we couldn't get it fast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah we have to change it back <laughs> yeah i was like you need to change it back yeah. yes but uh you know is yeah um so let's move on to uh kim okay um i am knitting my second post Thank you. i know and i picked a my ex uh baby yak camel color again i so i You're knit your love that I, I have well i knit your first one in the shibui Right. At, um, right, which is a really stretchy, stretchy yarn, um, totally different from the yak. Totally different. Or from the this, from the camel. Oh, oh, and that's why I wore it at the Mayak oh, there booth it is. in uh, at both awesome. knitting. I tried to leave with it, but Paula chased me down. <laughs> <laughs> This well, I, I I think Paula stole it from me first. Yeah. <laughs> so that, you know, I could say that I need it, but it's not true. This is actually this is Julie's sample and yeah. has to go back to her. That's what um, I think it's upside down. I think you might have it backwards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> there we go. I can see. I can see it has, the it has shaping in the neckline to so it doesn't yeah, do course. this. Of course it does. You know, I'm so seeing probably, a lot of those ponchos. I can't tell, you might have had it right the first time. I I, I think so. You yeah, see that like a, wait, wait. I, I see a lot of those ponchos out right now, but I want a classic poncho that's not going to be trendy. I mean, it is it's beautiful, it's trendy, but it will stay in style. Yeah. And if I'm yeah. going to invest in this, my time and money, I, I want it to be, yeah. you know, the one I wear in 10 more years. Absolutely. Yeah. That's, this and one, that, that's what this I love. one I was very thoughtful about the shaping because I wanted it to fit, have the contour of a sweater. Yes. Um, but I didn't want to, I wanted to, it, I wanted it to be an accessory, not have sleeves. <laughs> oh, okay, then. Paula, that looks it. so good on you. Work it. <laughs> and I love this split right where the arm yes. can, I can do things. Can, I can drive yeah. my car. Can, yeah. You know, right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You have to leave a place for it. Well, the, the, you're, all, you're able to move in that one. I, yeah, I, I, see, think, I, I see people do. Yeah. I that's see, one I've of the seen beautiful some things kind of that. similar ones where you, I'm like, the yeah, minute like they move the, their arm, it's going to be my dinosaur to, arms out. It'll take their sweat. Yeah. It'll take the poncho up with it. Yeah. Exactly. You don't so, want that. Yeah. So there's a couple of questions and comments. Um, Jana from Knitting Together with Kim and Jana is is on and she's going to be twinning with That's Kim. Right. They're knitting the same thing. So welcome, Jana. And um, the Mayak yarn that the post yeah. sample is it. in is the Mayak camel. This is the baby, yeah. So this is the baby camel. Um, so after we had, you know, the other brands, we all, we, you know, I love camel and I love the natural color. And I kept bugging uh, Andrea, I keep bugging him. So Andrea is the co-founder. And uh, he's actually in Tibet right now at uh, freezing with no waters in the middle of the night. I just wow. spoke to him a few hours ago. Oh. And uh, uh, so I, I asked him whether he can find some really nice camel that was, of course, we wanted a small cooperative, a small communion of, uh, community of Tibetan herders herding 
Come on. So we found that one in uh, in 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 at the border of uh, between Tibet and Mongolia, and it's really interesting because uh, they speak Tibetan, but they live in Yurt. So there is a nice combination of the of the two cultures as well. So we got the original yarn, the original color. This is the gobi, which is what uh, uh, Julie uh, designed. I love and it. We did uh, uh, dyed in the antrachite on top of it. Oh, it's also really nice, really, really beautiful. Mm. And then we found uh, uh, this year. Well, we, this we only launched it last year with Julie. That was the yarn that we uh, that we launched at the Mayak retreat, right? Oh, we yeah. went yeah. together to Venice. No, to yes, to Venice. The the the, um, the retreat in Venice. Yeah. The retreat in Venice, yes. And uh, and then we found this also natural. This is another. Tar, which is much lighter, a little bit lighter than Gobi. You can see that. No, that's not that's dyed. Together. Yeah. No, that's undyed. That's, that's the animal color. Oh, yeah. Beautiful. And then we dyed this on top of that one. Oh, really, really nice. You have my address. <laughs> Send them my <laughs> way. <laughs> on a beach, please. Yeah. And like so this make is a beautiful uh, cow. I'm so, I'm so in love with just that camp period and all that classic camel. Oh, yeah. Oh, somebody it. says I look elegant in the post. Oh, Jonna. You do. Oh, you do. <laughs> I know. Uh, like, I my, look my, silly, but it really I, suits I'm you. So shy, but yeah. it really does. It does. Yeah, suit that's you. why you're not going to get him back to it. <laughs> It's funny, actually. That's the kind of to get more yarn. <laughs> but it's uh, you know, uh, Julie had uh, um, she sold because she has so many samples. Well, I should say something. Two things about Julie uh, is uh, not only is a friend. So a while back, two uh -oh. years ago, yeah, two years ago, she's like flashing now. You so already like, read Julie. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what secret okay. is she telling? Okay. So two years ago, uh, we started at Mayak, we started a small project. We really wanted to help another uh, community of uh, mm -hmm. uh, farmers, mainly women, in a very poor area of right. Tibet and uh, there was no yaks anymore the land was bad there, there, there was no men or young people there it was only these old women and uh, there is uh the most marvelous old tradition centennial tradition of weaving and spinning in Tibet it was completely lost and only few women you can see you know you can ask them they look like 100 years old and they're like 25 just because of the sun and the hardship and everything else so we wanted to start this little project, which is called Dokarpo, uh, uh, a little weaving, a training center to bring back that, those skills. And uh, um, I spoke to Julie about it, and uh, Michelle Wang was the other, you know, good friends that we have. Yeah. And uh, I said, how do you know? How can we? We didn't have the money to start the project. We had all the infrastructure, we had everything else, but we, we didn't have the seed funding to start. And we did do a GoFundMe uh, page, which was raised some money. But then I thought, you know, what do knitters love? Yarn and uh, uh, and but a lot of knitters might want like a sample from a designer. So Julie sent us two suitcases full wow. of her samples. I was so happy. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and we auctioned them off, and that's how and uh, Michelle Wang did the same. So all of these samples went to the auction, and we raised the money to start uh, uh, to start the project. So you know that really, she didn't want anything. She said, "You take it and you you know put it to good use." Just just to to tell to say how you know I know you're flashing away, but you know. <laughs> how generous how it's generous uh, uh, she is <laughs> and uh, you know and how such a wonderful friend so that's my and <laughs> yeah well I'm taking this off because it's hot I'm getting I know I think I'm back. overheated too well no that but that's the reason why you're not getting this back I think it's <laughs> me perfectly oh no the reason why I said that story is because I when she recently you had a few of your samples for sale Oh, right. Yeah, that, that, well, this is good. I'm cleaning out my closet. So, yes. Going. And, uh, and I saw the original post in Shibui and I actually bought it. <laughs> and then, <laughs> I bought, there were two. Yeah. So, so Kim bought one it. and I bought the second one. And right. I, when I arrived, and then she said, Do you realize that that's the same? The same one I just finished <laughs> that we are going to do for the Mayak retreat. And I thought, Damn, I could have got it. <laughs> no, I have two. I might, and I do love the the I do love this in uh, in baby 
in baby camo. Paula, really did, really did Felicia buy that cardigan from Julie? Oh, yeah, no, 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 not from Julie, from me. Oh, that from is me. Michelle Wong. Ah, oh, yeah. That was, and I regret, I regret <laughs> so much, but you know, that was the time where we needed the money. We yeah, just needed yeah. money. And, and it looks perfect on Felicia. Felicia uh -huh. is the owner of uh, Pick Up Every Stitch, which is uh, a beautiful uh, store in Mount uh, uh, Kisco. Right. And, uh, you know, one of your local, in a way, almost local uh, uh, yarn store. And I go I there she quite was often. at that same event, right, Felicia? Didn't I meet yeah. her at the same time I met you guys? No, no I don't think yeah. No, I Felicia so. was not there. I she think was. she was not at the Mayak. Yeah, was she? Yeah, I think she was. Yeah, she was, oh, she was there. Met her there. She was there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, Yvonne asked if the baby camel is like the yak that it doesn't peel. So, so far, no peeling. I, I can't. <laughs> I'll put it under my armpit, like Julie. There you go. <laughs> uh, I mean, I, I can haven't. Just, yeah. I haven't been able to wear it yet, so I can't. But Paula has. <laughs> yeah. But I did wear it yeah. and I just drag it around, uh, you know, like different countries actually. And right. it doesn't peel. The reason why your yarn doesn't peel is because of the de-hairing process. We really, you know, we want to make sure that what the skin, you know, for the money that you, what you spend, we want to make sure that you have the best, uh, um, the best uh, uh, quality yarn. So the de-hairing process is crucial to the quality of the fiber. And this is why in a way our cashmere almost feel a little bit cottony because you don't have that halo of the fluffy stuff around it. And sometimes when you have the cashmere on the market, it's like, oh, it's so nice and soft and, and all of those things. Right, but you peel it as you peel it. Yeah. Oh, that's good so, to know. I yeah. Know that. yeah. yeah. Uh, what is the pattern name? Those colors are incredible. Uh, that was post P O S T by Julie Hoover. So we did sidetrack. I have a sweater in my young baby camel. He hasn't peeled even under the arm. Ah, it's funny because my, hus my husband, when I when I'm at trade show, when I'm event, I always say, "Do you see it doesn't peel?" And my husband said, "Why do you show your armpit to people all the time?" Because <laughs> that's where it peels. If it's gonna peel, that's where. It's, and, yeah. and, and down here where your arm rubs against. Yes. Yeah. Like, yeah. Does it peel <laughs> here, here, and here? All and then my seatbelt sometimes gets it. Going oh, yeah, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I but, I just really can't. I can forgive a little peeling, but I just can't uh, if it peels. Yeah. If I have yeah. to, you know, depill it every time I'm over it. So we have, we have a technical question. I think that might have gotten missed. I I was it Rebecca? Yeah. Yes. Yes, I've got my my uh, chat stuck on hers because I wanted to to get to that. Rebecca, is it possible for you to show us what you're talking about? Um, is it about the two by two rib? Yes. The leading line. She's um, asking the yeah the leading leg of the purl stitches in the back. So maybe Even in the back of your fabric. Um yes. So so I just was casting on during this right. and um I counted in groups of four because it was three hundred and twelve stitches for the scog. <laughs> so I'm proud of myself. I actually I actually <laughs> did it right. But um when I went to I joined in the round and when I went to um knit the knits and pearl the pearls because I did the long tail pearl and knit cast on as you were just talking about. So yeah. I'm so glad you explained that. I found that the leading leg was in the back. So we started by on. knitting in the, yeah. It oh, was you mean it's oriented, that was the stitches yes. oriented. Yeah, that, that, um, that's, that just happens. You okay. could, it, Oh, I don't. This is so I have to tell you, I I don't. Without worry it turning like into that. a long lecture, you if you prefer, you could knit through the back of the stitch, but d do it both ways and see which way you prefer. Because I do that intentionally to keep the uh, the cast on neater at the bottom. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, that gets a that makes a looser stitch. So that extra that extra twist in it keeps it looking neater. But it does orient. It does. It's oriented on the needle backward, like off the twist. So what you're I right. did is. So you're not I, doing I, anything wrong. I knit a couple dozen through the front, and then I said, "Oh, that's weird. I'm gonna knit. I'm gonna purl through the leading leg." Right. So I tend to do that. I don't worry about things. So I did, you know, a, 
probably like a quarter of it through the, the front and then three fourths of it through the back. And you'll never see it from a galloping horse. And I just was curious. <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> what it's it was like so. True. It, feel free if you prefer to do that, feel free. It's not, there's nothing technically uh, wrong with doing that. Okay, but you, if you were doing it, you would simply purl through the front. I do, yeah, I just purl it. Okay. Unless, unless it's possible that you may have been um, doing your cast, your, your long tail purl cast on where you come over and under and pull it through. Instead I could, of I, I, I was pretty careful. I tried to do it according to, I, and it was Pearl Soho. I love their tutorials. So that's neat. Right. Um, well, I'm gonna have to go watch it and make sure they're doing it. Cause you should, <laughs> come in, you should come in over and pull it out, but not not from the top and through. Okay. I think I was doing it correctly, but anyways. So, so yeah, so make sure you're kind of coming over and bringing it in, but not over from the back side and bringing it in because then it'll right. twist it. Yeah. Right. Okay. Well, thank but you. So anyway, much. no matter what you do, it's going to look fine. That's such a subtle it. thing. Yeah. <laughs> I'm making the scog. I'm so excited. And I'm actually working from stash, which is um, nice. even more exciting. Good. But I'm going to do, I haven't seen any. Mine is going to be white with gray color work instead of gray with white color oh, work. Oh, that'll be pretty, yeah, a lower, not quite as high contrast. That'll be pretty. Yeah, I'm looking yeah. forward to it. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Nice to meet you, Becky. Yeah, <laughs> nice <to meet> you. <laughs> I recognize the name. Yeah. I wanted to give a shout out to Linda Richardson. She's uh, She does sample knitting for me and oh, so good. So if anybody ever needs something knitted um, from her, she's amazing. And thank you for the compliment, by the way. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Talk to Paula after. <laughs> yeah. It's, I always need it's, yeah. It's always so much fun to, to do something for you, Julie. I, it's, I always learn so much. It's always a learning process for me. Oh, so, I, I would um, think I don't have much to teach you, Linda. You're, you're quite accomplished. But, yeah. So, I, I so you have to show everyone all your new stuff. Yes, we will. Yeah, we are getting there. Okay. My God, is yeah, we have to. So let's yeah, go to people are probably getting really tired of listening to us. No, no, no. But let's go to Kate. Kate, what are you casting on? I think we're so I, of it. I have cast on um one of Julie's new designs. It is Gemma. Yes, I think it's in Gemma here. Studio mm -hmm. blend two yarn. I am using the pearl colorway and there it is. That looks so good. Thank you. I'm gonna, yeah. I have to have that color now. Okay, so I, I, I have mine actually, in the butterscotch for the, cause I knew it would be such a stunning. Yeah, I, couldn't, I, I, I can't I, wear that color. I can't wear that color either. Well, I probably could, I just, it's like, whoa, that's bright. I, yeah, no, I'm, it's like red nails. I, I held it up to my face and Kim's like, no. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> it's color. color. It's yeah, yeah. I can uh, wear it if you don't want it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm. I need one of all the colors. I think I love that sweater so much. I'll wear that next time we do it. Do you have it there? Can you show the finish? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Let's show some. Uh, uh, some of the. That's what people are asking. Let's show things first with your yarns, and then if we have time, some Mayak stuff too, no if you don't mind. Hurts. Julie, I had a quick question though. Um, yeah. When we were talking about joining, Paolo was talking about joining the yarns. At one point, she said to spit splice. How would you join a new ball in this um, oh, yarn? Oh, definitely. You can definitely. I what I do is it's three plies, so I take yeah. one ply out. Okay. And you know, leave leave the other two like this long, and then I tease the fibers out, and then I do the same thing with the yeah. the new yarn in, and then I bring them together like this. Yeah. Get a little moisture, and then I just twist them and then I okay so here. you do yeah definitely yeah, yeah definitely okay. the, anytime there's uh, enough wool the the can you know the if you get under a microscope and look at wool it has these scales that cling to each other so it'll yeah. felt it'll felt okay. together and and it and the reason I take a ply out is to so you don't yeah. get that thick thicker so get thick. right. you don't get a couple stitches that are real thick because I I've, right. I've noticed that like when I see that in a fabric. Yeah, and don't knot it. I mean, you know, don't, no, 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 don't no. you know, I saw a lot of people, they do this, all these beautiful shows and all of a sudden you see all this knot. I'm like, why? You know, you just, yeah. Right, right. Or, or leave your end in the, 
in the on the side where you're going to hide it in this then you can weave it into the seam yeah that's another that's another trick i do a lot so this is the gemma sweater. there it is you know it is a beautiful color it is a beautiful it color. is I, it's yeah. not i could not wear it I, mean, I don't want to just this looks color it's a nice color because I, oh, I, I picked a color i could wear i just it's very bright, so I, I don't generally wear bright. It's actually bright. not that bright, Julie. I mean, can you see how monochrome? I mean, really. Uh, you should. My house is like. I might, oh. I might see something bright on a on an orchid. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that. It's got it's got sort of a bracelet length sleeve, which I love. Um, and this okay. lighter weight, I just, uh, I just, um, I just love this weight of a sweater. So. Oh, we have actually, sorry, we have an inside joke with uh, and Mayak for uh, Julie's colors. So when we design, you know, she sent us uh, ideas of her colors and everything else. And then we look at them and then we try it, you know, we go to the mill, we try all the colors. And uh, uh, and we always say, don't worry, you know, they're all muted, they're all minimalistic. They're like, there's nothing bright about it. They're not going to work and, very hard. And then it was like, you know, it's like, it's Julie's colors. It's just, like, <laughs> it's going to be, you know, what do you think? Is it going to be another gray, another blue, another, you know, when, so when she came out with this one, when she came out with this one, we're like, hey, what happens? I did some bright. Well, yeah, look, at, Julie? look at this color. You think it's I mean, bright, yeah. That's beautiful. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's beautiful. Really, one. That's I love a that. Rest, uh, yeah. Yeah, no, I'm the opposite of you, Laura. I go for the more <laughs> orange uh, side of red. So this is like a dark, uh, really, this is coming out really red on the camera, at least uh, from what I can see. This is, it's not, it's more of a, a burnt red. Yeah, it's like a rust burnt orange, yes. Yeah, it's, well, I call it henna, because that's what it reminds yeah. me of. Yeah, it does yeah. Like so, um, yeah. This and is this the is Luca scarf. I know a lot of you are knitting this for the knit yeah. one. Yes. So here's Beautiful. my yarn, but the original yarn was Baby Yak Lace. So you can see them, the difference side by side. A oh, little the mm -hmm. This one has a, um, this one has more loft and a little, it feels, you know, more like a wool and this one just feels like butter, you know. Laura, that's the one Amy Palka is knitting, right? Yep. So yeah, that's done with the baby yak lace or the baby yak, oh, sorry, or the Tibetan cashmere as well. And you only take right. three skeins. So this is a really nice project. I, I prefer the yak on it just yeah. because I feel like it has, it has the, more, the yak has the right body for this type yeah. of uh, accessory. Yeah. But the cashmere is beautiful. Oh, what, what else? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, the last thing I did with my new yarn is oh. this color work. This, this is Linda um, that we introduced a minute ago. Linda knitted this. Oh, Linda. Oh, gorgeous. Nice. Just That's beautiful. beautiful. So What's the, the name of this one? Uh, so this is called the Summer's Cowl. Um, and it, the color work pattern is the motif that I used for a hat uh, with just the color work on the brim. For mm. it's a, it's a Brooklyn Tweed published the pattern years ago, but I, I always had thought, oh, I, I wanna do more with that color work pattern. So I decided to just go crazy and every single row is color work. <laughs> And it's double thick and you, and you, you know, you sew it at the end. So it comes together. So you can wear it by itself or you can. And that's in your it. studio too, right? Yes. Yeah. Beautiful together. It's, like, it, it's thick, but it's lightweight. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful. If you love color work, knock yourself out. <laughs> you might have to do that. I mean, I have an obscene number of samples over so here. Just, so just, we keep, me how... we are happy. We are happy to keep, keep going. Them. Okay. Yes. Keep going. So the the first the first few patterns I did this is the this is the desert color of the babyac medium, and I did this scarf in Tibetan cloud or Tibetan oh, sky. Tibetan sky. Oops. Yeah, Tibetan sky in the blue, but I had to knit it again because I have to wear this color. Yeah, yeah, of course. So we had it, <laughs> and I love this. I love this cable scarf. You can do it in any colors. This is really nice. The Lauren wrap it's is beautiful. one of my favorite yeah. wrap. Yeah. I oh, even did a, the, the pattern includes the instructions for the chunky yarn too, but you don't, you're not stocking that anymore. No. But what is it called, Julie? It's Laurent. called Laurent. 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 
I can type it in. And then this, uh, the seal wrap and cowl was, oh, yeah. this was a special project in the baby act medium. Mm. Um, that's, yeah, that's with the. So depending on how many, how much yeah. yarn you want to invest in, you can knit a cowl. That's a good color. I'm wearing this one. Yeah, that's right, yeah. That's very close to the burgundy. It was a limited edition color that we did the amaranth. Right. Yeah. And then right. the purple fig is the other one. And you, you gave me exclusivity on that for a yes. bit. Yes. Yeah. Very much. So it's gone. That one is gone. This well, one is sort gone. of a plummy, a really desaturated plum color. It's oh, really I love pretty. that. Yeah. That's the. Wow. This is Ooh, really yeah. Cool. So this is the wrap version of that and has some ribbing on the, begins with a rib. That's gorgeous. Very deep ribbing. And I always put a um, nice selvage. I was, I'm always as thoughtful about the edges as I am about what's mm -hmm. happening in the middle. Okay. Let's know if you have a sample of the Melrose. 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 The hat. Oh, but yeah. Okay, that's back here. So I already showed you the Colvin Decay, which is, this is the, no, I'm so bad with names. I don't even remember the names. Well, you of have patterns. hundreds of patterns. It's yeah. okay. It's marble, <laughs> marble tweed, and it has a subtle, uh, subtle tweed happening. Can you see that? I love I would those. Live in that yeah. yeah. And then that was Sweater Club a couple years ago, I think. And this is the Melrose cardigan. Now, oh. for some reason, this one didn't take off. Everyone sort of went for the Colvin sweater, which I get because it's such a great turtleneck but this sweater I love this and I have lived in this sweater all winter like I throw it on over my pajamas in the morning and I wear it throughout the day I wear it at night and look look not a pill beautiful like I'm not even kidding I have not had to deep I, there's no pill look at those armpits they look great <laughs> <laughs> I still smell but this, this sweater I love. It has it's knit sideways, so you're knitting from the center. You cast on to the, for the center, and you knit out, and then it has a beautiful braided detail. And that's called the Melrose. Yeah, it yeah. has a beautiful braided. You're detail. putting all the links in the chat Thank as you. well. And I have carried that of... through the pickup. You know, I did the braided detail here. I did it on the cuff. I did it on the cuff as well. So it's very you know just very simple but beautiful details. And I, I love the fit of this. Last but not least, it has two I cords. Whoops. To tie you, it. You pick, yeah, if I can show you. Wow. It has two I cords that sit in the front so you can, I don't, I don't think I can get this on over my bulky sweater, but basically you can, okay, wait. <laughs> That's, I love that. Imagine this is on me and then you can, <laughs> You can just loop that closed and hold it, hold it closed. Very cute. I love this sweater. So take a closer look, everyone. Give it a give it a chance because it's a great sweater. Yeah. So what yarn would you use for that? That's my studio blend number two. I'm oh, sorry, two. number one. Number, number one. one. Okay. Is that sorry. still available? Yeah. Sorry. Oh yeah. yeah. Studio blend number uh, yeah, one. Yeah, it's still, still available. available. Yep. Yeah. I am getting low on certain colors of the, the, the color shore is getting low. Um, so what, so you, yeah. I'll show yeah. you what colors that comes in. This beautiful muted clay. The, the two colors I've already shown you are the tweeds, but here those are. This is called- Your wedding tweed. gown, natural color? What's your wedding? Very natural, yeah. <laughs> I don't think she heard that. Yeah, yeah surprise. <clears throat> and then I have uh, green. I, I love, love that green. Color. That's beautiful. Floral. And then this is the one I'm sort of, I'm not running super low, but this one's selling more because of course it's blue. Um, and then the last but not least, a very beautiful navy. Mm. Um, this is the bright one. This one's called. <laughs> yes exactly <laughs> put on your sunglasses exactly okay so then if we get into studio blend number two then we're 
we're doing three neutrals and three colors. So this is shadow, pearl, and, and uh, fog. Beautiful. Three, three yeah. colors, sky, henna, and butterscotch. That henna is beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, really pretty. Duly, somebody yes. asked me the Melrose hat. Do you have a version of that? Yes. I want to get in that studio. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> Where exactly do you live, Julia? <laughs> yeah. We are going to post the address in a minute. <laughs> this is oh. the Melrose hat. So it has the same uh, detail as the cardigan. Nice. Um, yeah, I wear these quite a bit too. Yeah. Oh, somebody wants to see the Maya yarns too. Yeah. And I have the same, this is also in my studio blend number one. Oh, I love this one. They are best. Oh, yeah. Uh, yes. Is a, a couple of Kim people are making Knit that. Uh, Kim from Knit Together, I think, is. Just making. love this. So classic. Yeah, yeah that's it's a beautiful. beautiful. It's in my gorgeous. Queue. If you only have one cable vest in your closet, you're done. This one I love too. And I think the hood scares people, but. I'm, I was so proud of this one when I finished it because I was. It has so many great details. It's yeah, a moss that on stitch, your Instagram. Oliver moss stitch, but then I also um, everything is picked up. So you pick up and then you do a modified three needle bind off to seam. Oh, I love it. Oh. And it creates this beautiful decorative detail. Yeah. So it, it's everywhere. It's on the neck, around the neck. It's on the spine of the hood. Mm -hmm. so it's just really good and it looks just as good from the inside too and what's that one called julie this one is <laughs> shoot. it's Sorry. called glenn glenn g-l-e-n yeah which is my husband's middle name oh, and okay. this is totally unisex like you could knit this for a guy my son looks great in this it, if i could get my husband to wear anything yeah. i know he would yeah, yeah. look good too but. Um, uh, all right, and then two, two more, and then I can go back to my backyard. <laughs> this is my hatcher pullover. Yeah. <laughs> which I know, yeah, I knew you admit that. Yeah. So you did the North Light fibers? I did. Right. Yeah. Which is a nice yarn. It's, it's, it's a nice yarn. Similar. It, it pills. Oh. Well, and, and I hope that Sven's not listening. But um, when I got the yarn for the, the sample that I knit originally, the, I think the mill was having some issues. So I had color variation issues that oh. I had to overcome in Photoshop to, but yeah, um, that's, but it, you know. Yeah, it's okay, it's okay. It's okay. Live and learn, yeah. Just got some work to do on that. <laughs> yeah, but it's a great anyway, This doesn't pill. Mm. Love it. But yeah, this is uh, the hatcher. And I was thrilled that I, the, the yarn was complimentary to that. And then last but not least is this beautiful cowl. Ooh. And this, this cowl sits, uh, it has shaping in it. So it sits. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It doesn't splay out, you know, like <laughs> just knit a tube. It, it just flops in the front. So this, that's why I shape it that way. Uh, Julie, we have a question. Uh, can you make any yarn uh, a substitution recommendation for Martine uh, as Shibui is no longer doing it? Yeah, I haven't had that was sort of an abrupt uh, thing well, for me that I haven't had time to go through all my because I do have quite a few patterns that I've used Shibui <laughs> yarns for. And um, so no, I don't have it. I don't really have a recommendation because that's a that's a very specific combination of yarns. But I'm sure that there's, I'm sure there's um, possible substitutions for that. It's kind of in the DK range. By the time you bring bring, I think it was Silk Cloud and Twig and pebble held together maybe, or something like that, or no, a cone, which is a little thinner than twig. Oh. So yeah, so somewhere in that sport to DK weight, but you know, if you, if you wanna look for some of those novelty yarns, try Habu Textiles. She, she's, she's um, I don't know what she's gonna have in stock cause she's kind of one foot out the door of the knitting industry right now, but she does still have quite a bit of fiber that uh, I would highly recommend taking a look at that because 
when you come when it comes to blending yarns like those novelty yarns she does that really well so uh, so okay. yeah i'm sorry i don't really have a great answer for that but give me time i'll figure it out because i have several patterns that i'm gonna have to kind of rethink what what i could uh, offer them then okay that's what that's what so much fun about swatching you can figure it out you know just pick pick out a yarn get to know it and see so fun oh so fun yeah. so that's, that, that's what i mean that's why i swatch is to to create fabric and and when you knit you're creating fabric and the shape at the same time so exactly you're getting so dark laura as a I, 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 I just texted her laura's giving us a hint we better be quiet now no no that. no i'm sorry it's um uh, uh we're renting this flat and and the lighting is not optimal in scotland they're very very energy conscious and all the bulbs oh, are dead. Right. so i was sitting at the window which is where i always sit like we podcast the other day and when it's night but it's you know it's almost nine o'clock <laughs> i mean it's right. amazing actually quite still bright but i apologize it's just gonna look bad because i can't really I could go to the kitchen, but then I'd be it's blinded. It's fine. It's fine. Yeah, no, fine. You're good. We know right before we started our Zoom, we had a huge thunderstorm came. The clouds oh. were just really dark. And I was like, oh, <laughs> I don't want to lose power during our Zoom. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we had the power mm -hmm. went out yesterday. So. Oh, boy. Um, okay, well. Um, yeah. Any I just want questions? to share a lot of people were asking that sorry a lot of people were asking about uh, uh pros so I want to show yes. my favorite sweater yes. you know when somebody uh -huh. asks me do you have a favorite sweater I do <laughs> that's the one I almost stole from Vogue Nine. yeah yes. <laughs> oh there's Julie's uh oh. that's what color mine is <laughs> I guess. that's on my list too oh. so oh. beautiful so this is absolutely amazing. And uh, uh, we should tell the story of how this design came about is, you know, I love V-necks. I, I cannot have a high neck. I cannot have, I don't really like the round neck. It's not me. And, uh, and so I kept, I kept begging Julie, can you just design a V-neck sweater? But not one of those where, you know, they, they pull apart, they break, it has to be comfortable. Like one something. <laughs> Yeah, it was very specific. And, uh, Don't tell you know, me what to do, pal. I knew exactly what I wanted. I mean, you know, do I know what I want? Yes, I mean, like yeah. Julie. I, I took the challenge. Yeah. And we were organizing the, you know, the knitting retreat in Italy. In uh, and she says, okay, then I'll do it for that. And she came out with this. And the moment I had, you know, the original sample is in uh, uh, in the baby yak lace in the color desert that you have there. And uh, the edging has the Koopa, mm -hmm. so the baby mm. yak cotton. So you can see, you know, in uh, they also keep silly little, little, but the, the detail is amazing. And uh, um, so when she did it like this, and I said, oh, how nice. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. I'm sure people will love it, but can I have some colors? And at the time, you know, one of the, color that we had that uh, I thought, you know, I always go for pink. And I said, I have to have, you know, Julie would not go for pink. And uh, uh, so I said, what about green? You know, we discussed it and we went for the um, for the urban nature, which is this one. And, uh, and so she did. And literally I can't stop wearing it. I mean, this is- What yarn is that one? Yeah. This is the baby yak lace. Really it's it's okay. really cute on you too. This is the baby yak lace. So should I do the little dance again? Yes, please. Is it, is it held double, Julie? It yes. has double. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It just, uh, you know, it's so nice and comfortable. Um, and just that little detail of the yeah. color coming yes. down. The detail is, is great yeah. on the here and also on the edge the down bottom. here. Yeah. The seaming. This is uh, uh, another wonderful uh, uh, knitter, uh, Deb. Uh, uh, actually, Deb Sands. Uh -huh. uh, yeah, Deb San. She's on Instagram, and she just uh, actually she just released her own uh, uh, pattern, also in this oh. color. Oh yeah, uh, great! Yes, she's really really nice. It's called uh, three twenty three, I believe. Three two one twenty three. Uh, it's on a website. Sorry, Deb, if I don't remember the name. And uh, but it's amazing. So this has become my favorite sweater, and I keep going around. I wear it all the time, and. Uh, and when somebody wants to say to try it on, like Kate tried on. No, it's mine. 
I sort of like look like a hawk. It's like, okay, is somebody <laughs> running away with that sample? Not did, did it happen. <laughs> so I had Kate wearing this and Kim wearing post. And I think Laura, you had a Keller on and on the Vogue knitting. I think it was a Keller. But I knit myself, yes. Yeah, yes. yes, yes. You didn't have to steal it. <laughs> no. No. So, you know, but that's the baby Yak lace, which makes a beautiful fingering. And we have so many different colors. Someone um, wants to know if the edge is added at the end. No, it's a cast on. It's a cast, it, it's a cast on for the cuff and the hem, but it's the bind off for the neckline. Okay. Yeah. So that's one of my favorite. And uh, I think Julie has uh, used most of our, oh, actually, I think she used all the bases of uh, all the bases that yeah, we have. I think so. The baby yak um, medium. Yeah, well, that's not true. I haven't done. Well, silk. The baby yak silk. Right. And I haven't done, I have an idea that I wanted to do for the cashmere, but I just, I have to find the right time. Okay. As long as but technically a, that works for Luca, so yeah, for Luca as well. And so, you know, in a way, it could look, you know, for this one as well. But it's, you know, it's an investment. What right. color was the wonderful pinky red? Oh, yeah, sorry. Yes, I know it is. So this is the latest color that we launched just two, three weeks ago. I think this is Passion Red. It was part of Ooh. our Cora Club. I think we still have some available. So if anybody is interested in this particular one, they can just call us or email us or something I will try to because this is so this is uh, how close different so this is a marena uh, that Laura is uh, knitting and this is a much brighter so it's more on the orange side so if you think you know look at the stress I could just do ah. stripes stripes would be great with this one and then if you add the yellow as well but we have so many colors I don't think we have the time to show them all of course I could pick the some pink just as we have it you know, because oh, pink wow. goes with everything. So that would be, but we have a lot of blues and greens. And so this is the baby yak, which is really the, 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 the main line that, uh, uh, that we have. But the other line that we used a lot and Julie has used for a sweater club is the Tibetan cloud. Yeah. She's done the Keller and the Pearson, which I, I know quite a few I people. I have those, are, yeah. Oh yeah, the room. quite a few people are. I love that Pearson. Yes, me too. Oh, how pretty. I'll start Ooh. with the color. So this is a, a pullover with twisted ribbed. All so over that's the, yeah, that's where the natural. And I really was uh, trying to go as minimal as possible with this. And so it just has very, very simple shaping. Or is that the one you knit? <laughs> yeah, I love it. It's a go-to piece. This is Ginepra, right? Yeah, which is one of the colors that actually we pulled. Uh, so it's oh, not available what? anymore. <laughs> yeah. But uh, we have uh, other green. It's so, uh, yeah. green it's we really have nice. other greens uh, and grays uh, uh, as well. And what we are doing right now, uh, if you are uh, uh, following us on Instagram or if you are subscribed to the newsletter, if you're not, please do to all of our, both Julie and us. And uh, of course. And that's, oh, yeah, that Canela. One. Yeah, oh, I don't have, oh, yes, yeah. So that's in Canela. And that was your sweater club. Yeah, the year was the sweater yeah, club. Yeah, 2019, maybe? Mm -hmm. It's been a while. Yeah, something like 2020. Yeah, that was, I yeah. asked if I was going to be doing a sweater club. Right, Somebody, I saw that earlier. Yes, yes. So, so that's sort of evolved um, from the time I started to now. I've, I've tried to kind of evolve on doing sweater club. Um, based on the either the feedback that I get or the response I get. And so, sometimes I have to kind of guess, but I have found that initially everybody wanted to try it because it's new. And then as time went on, I got feedback saying it's hard uh, to get both, you know, to get both sweaters. So then I started separating the two where you could just instead of getting both patterns with the yarn, you get one pattern and that allowed me to bring the price down on the pattern a little bit. Now I'm including the pattern for free for any project kit you purchase from my site. So as I, I, I sort of have evolved on the sweater club because I, I feel like it's friendlier if I'm just releasing one thing at a time and giving you the yarn. Um, so I am now just adding things to my project kit page as I release them with the yarn for sale. So that's kind of taken the place of Sweater Club, but I may do a special collection where I, where I call it Sweater Club again, I don't know. 
I kind of feel like it's waning though. That's why I haven't, the interest in it's been sort of waning. So, so that's my answer. I'm, I'm not sure, but <laughs> I, I enjoy Sweater Club. I, I feel like it, uh, I always feel like it's a special project and, and I'm really grateful when people participate. So. Mm -hmm. Somebody's asking what weight is uh, uh, the Tibetan cloud. So this is a light uh, decay to sport. And what we are doing right now this year, uh, you know, one of the things that we do, we always want to connect the, our love of fiber to Tibetan culture and always trying to talk about, not just about the nomads, but about Tibetan culture in general. So um, this year we come out with this, I mean, I come out with the idea, which is drives my team crazy because I wake up in the morning and I have 10 new ideas. And, uh, uh, and uh, they say, just go to sleep, sleep, don't sleep. <laughs> and uh, anyway, so I come up with the idea of having this, uh, uh, the, um, you know, the 12th sign of the Tibetan zodiac, which also in Asia, you know, so, so Chinese, uh, uh, you have every year is that there is an animal associated with that particular year. Mm -hmm. And there is the four elements, the fire, the water, the air, and, uh, and iron, metal. And so we thought, you know, it would be nice to do in Tibetan cloud to do 12 new colors associated with 12 animals. Of, and instead of doing it uh, over 12 years, let's do it over one year, so one a month. So we are launching a new color every month, and uh, uh, which is fun because we don't produce huge quantity, we just produce smaller quantity, but those colors are entering the the palette so you will always once we launch it you have it and then it will always be available we will have to restock it uh, and so we started with uh, um, so in what we do for each animal we have we work with a tibetan uh, a good friend of mine a tibetan artist that does all of this illustration that oh, created uh, for us so well, this uh, is the the year of the rabbit and so he has a little rabbit that has is the water rabbit, but it is knitting, so you can see here. Mm -hmm. And the color is this uh, 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 the stone blue, so they go together. So we have that, and then we did the uh, the year of the tiger, the month of the tiger, which is the tangerine. Is it? Yeah, here. So so each uh -huh. animal has a color. So we did this color as well with the tangerine, and then what we do in the month that we launch the that we launch the, the yarn, you, we gift a little project bag. So with two skeins, we just gift one of these and the project bags are available uh, you know, throughout. And I think I show you one more, which is the month now, which is still available, is the month of the snake. Ooh. So, and that uh, is the lotus blossom, which is really a peach mm. pink, which is really, really, really nice. So that's what we do with that. And uh, um, we have, of course, you know, I'm known for orange and pink. So one of the two, this color, I think, who is knitting the, uh, the hat? I did, yeah. So and we created it uh, with fantastic. Amy. Yeah, with Amy, who is uh, uh, in the background helping us. Uh, she designed this uh, beautiful uh, um, hat, reversible hat. And the cowl is coming out next this week, actually, next week. The cowl is coming. Oh. Julie's I, quite, I approve those colors. I think that's a really fun hat. Yeah. Yeah. So that's it was it. fun. It was fun to knit with too. Uh, and so we have that. We have the cloud. We have, you know, and maybe in the next session we can show you some of the other line as well and uh, more details about uh, um about uh, the uh, other, you know, and more about our story if you're interested in. But well, you know, we just take it. I was just going to say, I mean, I did see on an Instagram post that Julie said she might have to knit one of those hats. <laughs> I, I think it I did say that. A black and white photo. I think I did say that. I think you're right. Because I remember seeing that. Going, oh, that's really cute. I mean, I could wear a hat that bright. Yeah. Oh, but you can make it in black and white. No, no, no. I think the orange and the the fuchsia is like so yeah. fun. <laughs> so this fun. is saffron and sweet, really fun. Piece, which yeah. is, uh, yeah, if I could wear everything. Uh, on a cold gray winter day, you'd love to put I don't on dislike color. Up. Don't get me wrong. I just don't uh, put it, you know, on me. <laughs> or in your house. I mean, I'm not a fan of color because I very, <laughs> I actually do work with color quite a bit. In fact, Paula, a lot of times they'll send me their lab dips and get my feedback on it. And, oh, yes. Yeah. So that's what I know with. Yeah. And oh, sorry. We've, just we've worked that. a ton together <laughs> behind the scenes yeah. like that. We yes. could tell story after story about. 
<laughs> oh, let's not. <laughs> well, no, I mean, I just, we really do work, work together more than you know. So. Yeah. And I think what this, you know, again, is uh, um, Julie has helped. I have two people helping with colors. I have Julie and Kirsten Kapoor, which is another wonderful designer and wow. a dear friend. And, uh, uh, you know, Julie has, uh, um, Kirsten has helped you with all of the Tibetan cloud uh, uh, colors. I was driving her mat and she said, how many colors do you need? And I said, 12, 12. <laughs> And, uh, yeah. and Julie, you know, we send her dips and she says lighter, you know, is, is really nice collaboration. It's nice to have friends. I know this is not your pattern, Julie, but I want you to show it. Yeah, of course, of course. So this is the hat uh, and uh, uh, it's called A-N-T, and another take, because there are so many hats. They have a similar design, but we want it, you know. I, I saw something similar and I really want it. So I immediately called uh, uh, Amy and drive her crazy too. And I said, can we <laughs> that in our yarn? I want it in these colors. And she designed it. Uh, we published it on Ravelry and uh, it has two different crowns. Is it knit end to end? Is that not your cast on here? Hey, oh, Amy, okay. the fact that I know, I answered the question, Amy. <laughs> yes, you did. You did. And you pick it up and work the other way? Yeah, it's a provisional Oh, that's on. great. Yeah. yeah. And uh, the good thing about it is that once you have it, you know, you can wear it as a slouchy hat. I think I need that. Yeah. Send that to me. Yeah. But, I'll but, trade but, you. It's, so you can really wear it as a, you know, nice slouchy hat. The, you know, it's big and I like yeah. it. And it's because it's a double, it's double here and then really warm. And then if you just yeah. move it. And more. the cast on will stabilize the, yeah. that brim. That's, that's a good yeah. job. Yeah. And now you see it here before anywhere else. We have the cow. Okay. Ooh, which is coming out next week. So it just, again, you can just wear it. Uh, and it's a tiny one. Again, you just need two skeins right. of the baby yak lace. You can wear it. Oh, there's my glasses gone. Done. And you can then just. You could substitute that. cashmere if you wanted, right? Yeah. Yeah. And you can just have it like that. Or you can just. I wear it in Venice the last, you know, the last two weeks that I was there because it was so cold. Yeah. Anyway. Oh, that looks fabulous. Yeah, that's cute. Very cute. Oh, sorry nice to. Job, Amy. Yeah. Oh, and something else is coming. So, you know, keep, keep following now. Keep, Thank keep. You. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I mean, Julie, I do have to say when I saw that, that you made a comment on someone's post on Instagram about knitting it, I was like, oh my God, I knit a hat that Julie wants to knit. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I mean, I'm a knitter too. So sometimes I like to do things for fun. Yeah. It's, uh, I see that people are slowly leaving. They say they're leaving and they love it. So I think maybe they yeah, we've, we've really kept you way hours. Yes. what we should we have. Did. Thank you for joining us. Yeah. We hope thank that you for, enjoyed thank it. Thank you for your enthusiasm and your support for my work. I'm just really grateful for you guys. So, and you can you send us any questions uh, you as we said go on the ravelry uh, instagram keep emails. watching the knitting posse <laughs> when's, when's next month's group uh zoom is being asked yeah okay mm -hmm. then, so the yeah. next yeah we are on it third saturday we should know is that it right? an, is um, it may, may, may 13th at two o'clock yes thank you yeah. laura right <laughs> yes. So hope, I hope next time we we get to hear more from you. Yes. Yes. About what you're knitting and exactly. And, you know, so we'll save your questions that didn't get answered. Ask them again, or maybe you think uh, of something. Or new. pop them into Ravelry if you still have questions. Oh, right, right. Yes. But next one, you know, this was really an introduction to give you time to cast on and enjoy. The next one is we want to hear from you. And then if you have any question, if you're comfortable in getting on the video and uh, chat with right. us, if not, you can also still do it on Zoom. And then you just let us know that you don't want to be on YouTube. We just cut you out during uh, some of the editing that we can do. Um, and uh, uh, what was the forum called again on... Uh, um, can you want to pop in the link, Amy, for the rivalry group, please, again? Um, you can find all the links on our okay. Instagram page, on the profile as well. Uh, it would mean a lot to us if you were to follow, of course, Julie and us and the Knitting Posse on Instagram as well. And maybe if you were to subscribe to our uh, um, YouTube channels, again, the Knitting Posse and the Mayak Tibetan Fibers channel, it just gives us that you know, that push to keep going, especially me to go on and talk to myself. 
so, but you know, this one we 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 will upload this uh, as soon as uh, Amy <laughs> has time to do it. Thank you, Amy. Thanks, Amy. <laughs> All right. Thank, Thank you. Well, everybody. happy Earth Day. Happy Thanks, Earth Day. everybody. Happy Take care. Bye. 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 Have a wonderful weekend. Thank Ciao, you. Thanks, everybody.